aiming at your head. My residents who represent the West Side. Usual suspects, so what's next? Yes, let's ride. Usual suspects. Player, this the West. The vest won't work, cause we aiming at your head. Mr. Criminal, you well be on the tag team. He's supposed to fell asleep and walk up from the red dream. From the West. With them usual suspects, who up a comp is gang bangers and roughness. Second hustle, making that money like daily the subject. In the back of the homies, we go strapped up, ready to bust text. And what's next? Became a warden of the state. Used to lock us up in cages, running from places we used to cock. And if it ain't about the dollar signs, not all my mind will conversate. Don't even want the world is mine. I used to contemplate. Catch me in the S550, checks of this paper, got no time for Since I entered number one, I used to claim it and I dominate. In a city full of drama, gotta dodge the snakes. Lost souls, dodging them demons, I never lost the face. Usual suspects, player this the West, the vest won't work cause we aiming at your head. My residents, we represent the West Side, usual suspects, so what's next, yes let's ride. Usual suspects, player this the West, the vest won't work cause we aiming at your head. Mr. Criminal, you well be on the tag team, he's supposed to fell asleep yeah. and walk up uh. in my bad dream. My agenda, no surrender, Never. used to bust start of a Nissan Integra. <laughs> Pistol used to look like a hockey stick from the land where it makes again like the politics. It's obvious that we very uncontainable. Yes, my city in the wood unfadable. From the cradle to the grave, we give it all. The power that we have through every street brawl. Shot calling, player, I'm a born leader. With my blue flag, Chuck Taylor's and wife Peter. My side bitch is my girl's best friend. I swear, this criminal life I'm living on the edge. Usual suspects, player, this the West. The vest won't work, cause we aiming at your head. My residents, we represent the West Side. Usual suspects, so what's next? Yes, let's ride. Usual suspects, player, this the West. The vest won't work, cause we aiming at your head. Mr. Criminal, you well be on the tag team. He's supposed to fell asleep and walk up from a bad dream. Man, everybody wants to be a gangster till it's time to do some gangster shit. It's critical! You can smell the fear coming out your pores when a real gangster comes through the door. All that hard talk, homie, I don't believe it one bit. See me get scared when it was time to hit a lick. Your old homies out here got you on the shine. Asked about you, they replied, he ain't no homie of mine. You're the type to get treated like a bitch. Pistol whip it took for your shit. Got you jumping shit. Before you speak, I see right through the week. Ready for war as they retreat. Where they go? How you talk, how you move, boy, doesn't add up. Doesn't add Act up. up, get your body wrapped up, all in plastic. <laughs> Real killers move in silence, some sicker than the virus. Clapping how we live in, but boy, you're nothing like us. Big tinted young dopey about to clear them all out. Bunch of phonies did nothing when they all got called out. Put a strap in his hand, watch how we shake. Give me a pistol when I'll show you, homie, that we're not Give the same. Taking pictures with your tool, only doing it for them views in the wood. Family Entertainment, Bonnie and Clyde Show. Want to give a shout out to all our sponsors. This month, our sponsors are as follows. Little Rascals Jumpers in Riverside, California. Tap in with Little Rascals when you have your next birthday party, quinceanera, graduation party. They got the dopest setups, the dopest rentals that you could get for your backyard. Jumpers, tables, the whole nine. Tell them Mr. Criminal sent you for that discount. Then next, we got my homie JB underscore fitness. Getting everybody right. It's summertime. Get your mind right. Follow the page for a little bit of that motivation. Tell them Mr. Criminal sent you. Then we got the homie punching back. You know the logo and the slogan, punching back. Attorney Rosenberg, my homie, defending L.A. and Southern California. Attorney Rosenberg, tapping with him. Uh, solid sponsor, keeping everybody defended out here. All the criminals. You know how we do it. Criminal cases getting defended. There we got Rap Kings. Tell them I sent you Rap Kings. If you want your businesses rap, your vehicles rap, any raps that they do, you know the kings of the raps do it. Rap Kings, that's the logo right there. Trey Craft Farms. Shout out to Trey Craft Farms. Keeping the Crime Family Podcast lit. We in here smoking 24-7, 365. I just had our guests lit off that Trey Craft. So keep on tapping in. Keep supporting. Give them a follow. Give all of our sponsors a follow. Much love to everybody out there. And let's keep on doing it. Much love from the Crime Family Network and Bonnie and Clyde. Let's go. And we back. 
Fresh off the road, live from Vegas. What's cracking? This is Jimbo's footage. This is Fire Low. This is Goldie. What's up, Mr. Criminal? It's your homeboy, Steven Lou. This is your homeboy, Ricardo, giving a shout out. Yo, what's cracking? It's me, Alvino. This is Veronica. It's Monico from Atlanta. Yeah. I'm calling in from the San Fernando Valley. I'm calling from Montebello. Already on Wicked Boulevard every weekend. Out from Denver, Colorado. From South Central. And we back, baby. Supporting the crime family entertainment. Mr. Criminal on air live. Network podcast support the new crime The most family. mobile, the most gambling, and the most sober podcast on the West Coast. You know how we do it. Yeah. Mr. Criminal on air live. A couple days before Christmas Eve. A couple days before the nightmare before Christmas with Mr. Criminal and Conejo. And tonight, we got something special for the people. We got something special for the culture, for the community. And without further ado, I want to bring my homeboy to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, the West Side's very own, 310's very own. Spanky Loco is in the building. What's cracking, Karna? It feels good, homie. It's amazing. We've been connected for, for many years. Yes. They don't know the, the original connection, but we're going to educate them tonight. But we in the building. The homie Spanky Locals in the building. We're going to celebrate the homie. We're going to talk about the movement. We're going to talk about the music. We're going to talk about the growth. We're going to talk about love, positivity, mm-hmm. life. Man. And uh, yeah, we back in the building. It feels good. I just got back from Vegas. Was driving about 100 plus <laughs> to try to make it. I didn't want to let the homie down. And yeah. shout out to the homie out in Vegas. I'm going to tap back in with you. But we here now, 2023, about to end. It feels good to end out the year. I got some good news. I was looking at the numbers on the social media, and we're doing about 90,000 plus views daily. We hit 32 plus million views this year. Wow. And I don't know what happened in the last two days, Critical, but the page went up 1.35 million wow. in the last 24 hours. So shout out to you guys out Let's there supporting. Go, shout out to this organic love. Shout out to the no promotion, no budget, just all you guys soaking it up and loving it. And I appreciate you guys because the doubters, the supporters, the haters, you all have a position to play to make this a success. So I want to thank you guys. Much love and respect to everybody out there. Crime Family Entertainment, and we back in the building. But tonight, we are back, and I got the hood TMZ in the building. Meow. What you got, homie? What What's up, what up? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? Criticals in the house. <laughs> hey, uh, remember a couple weeks ago, we uh, I let you know about the speed cameras that were coming to uh, California. Yeah, I've been having nightmares about them. <laughs> yeah, hey, so have I, bro. <laughs> well, luckily, guess what? I didn't see our city or our surrounding cities. I didn't see our cities in the uh, where they're going to start off next year. Yes. So, not happening here. It's not happening anywhere, anywhere around here. We're going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out Isale. to Isale. everybody else that's going to be so, getting those. So we're still good. We can still do that. You know what I'm saying? We can still drive a little faster than 11 miles. Man. Um, but in those cities, if you go over 11 miles, you will be getting a ticket. Yeah. You know what's funny? How did we learn about that critical? <laughs> uh, we were driving. We weren't driving fast in Arizona. No, it was New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico. We weren't driving fast. And um, so we got no tickets. But... Uh, there's a lot of speed cameras there. Yeah, so we were, uh, shout out to the homie Tommy in New Mexico, Burke, and we were rolling out there, and the homie tossed me the keys to his whip. <laughs> shout out to him, man. I, I love the homie. <laughs> Anywhere we go, you know, we get that love. And he said, hey, you could drive the car, all this, right? But why did, why did he tell me three days into the trip, like, hey, criminal, <laughs> have you been speeding? I'm like, nah, I'm not sure why, dog. He goes, because we got speed cameras all over this month. Uh, so uh, the next thing you know, I'm pretty sure he probably got about five or six in the mail. But it is what it is. He should have told me one. early, though. You know what I mean? So, hey, shout out to Big Brothers taking over the whole world, man. I feel like uh, there's nowhere we could escape it anymore, dog. It's yeah. like uh, from Ooh. from every aspect of life, there's cameras everywhere. Like I mentioned the other day, that ASAP Rocky trial came out, and the jurors showed 31 different angles of the whole crime from three three angles of the crime and then his exit all the way down they found every single ring every single business camera that shit makes me not want to commit i I don't even want to kill a fly in 2024 (laughs) real talk animal cruelty and shit but yeah man it's it's a scary thing we're in a different time homie yeah that's pretty bad they put that in the dollar bill years ago and kind of gave us a warning 
the yeah. all-seeing eye was going to be watching. Mm -hmm. And it's the power that be. So it's not really a surprise if you really study. But that's a whole different topic for another situation. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. I heard a lot of things about that. What else is cracking in the news? So uh, you don't wear your Apple your Apple Watch anymore, do you? I haven't I haven't worn it in a while. Yeah, well, well, guess what? What's cracking? They're banning it, bro. Is that real? <laughs> it's, it's very real. So... Uh, Apple's having an issue with um, another company that they that they got the oxygen level reading. Okay. Um, part some of some medical stuff, right? Yeah, and so they're having some issues, and because of that, they're no longer allowed to sell the Apple Watch. Damn. So yeah, it's banned right now, pending pending a lawsuit. But I'm pretty sure if you got any of those and you want to sell them, you probably go for like 1,500 right now on Damn. Amazon. <laughs> Supply and demand, huh? Yeah, for you sure. You know, it's crazy. I, I was I was on vacation. I seen a dude walking around with a mini iPad on his wrist. No, yeah, that's how big it looked, dog. And I was like, "Hey, homie, what brand is that?" He's like, "It's the new Apple Watch." I'm like, "Damn, oh, it's homie, the main one. yeah, the big, big I one." I guess, yeah. I guess, small isn't cracking no more, right? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but yeah, maybe, maybe it was time. I, I think that uh, when you take people's ideas, just because you're a big conglomerate or whatever they call that, and, mm. and you feel like you could step on the little man, it's gonna catch back up to you, man. Because I know a lot of them companies be jacking people's ideas. So yeah, very true. Karma, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Sometimes it, what goes around comes around, homie. But they made enough paper and they got enough bank to pay off any type of issue like that. So shout out to Apple for running the whole damn world right now. What else is cracking? So this is off of Baby Girls News, Boss Lady. Hey. She said, uh, today's going to be a meteor shower, and it's going to peak tonight. Tonight? Tonight. So tonight into tomorrow, correct? Yes. And we're going to be able to see between 5 and 10 meteors per hour. Damn. That's a lot. That's a lot of dreams come true if you make yeah. a lot of wishes. I remember when we were driving from L.A., we seen that uh, that one shooting star? Yes, we did. The same time, bro. Same time. You know how hard it is to see one? It's very hard. Don't I've you? only seen a few my whole life. Same here. That was That's dope. That's a whole shower. Yeah, and, a then whole you, shower, bro. and then you and then you made the wish out loud, so <laughs> it's not gonna ever happen. happen. Yeah, it's all bad. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. He's like, I hope we have a, we're gonna have a successful, amazing year. I was like, fuck the critical fuss, it. It's all I good. Need a backup one. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my but bad. But it's all good, homie. Hey, shout out to that 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 uh, Ecuadorian devil spider or whatever. I think I saw a baby in my house the other oh, day, dog. Nah, bro. Nah, I'm not even lying, nah. dog. I was going to the restroom the other day. I said, baby, what the hell is that? I had the door open because I was putting up Christmas lights. And uh, I seen a crazy ass little mini tarantula, homie. You I wasn't trying to see that in bags. Brought that back in your. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Right? Yeah. That back in your travel. That might have been what it is, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. breaking news: criminal and populated uh, populated California with uh, Satan spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's that's all good. How, have you been to Vegas lately, Critical? Uh, no, I haven't been there for about a year now. So everything in Vegas now is. No, I lied. Completely what? I'm sorry. When we did the show. Oh, yeah, Mandalay Bay? Yes, sir. Okay, well, if you try to go to the casino and try to gamble these days, it's people everywhere, all over the machines, and now there's no more old school machines. It's all digital. I wasn't used to that. Mm. So now they got fake coins falling. It's like, ding, 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 ding. We turn around, <laughs> me and my baby girl, it's like all digital and shit. It feels weird, homie, being in the digital age. I'm not used to it, homie. Yeah, that's all bad because they can control all that. So we went we mm. went to uh, Fremont Street. Are you familiar? Yeah, familiar? that place is amazing. And it felt good to go back to the old school vibes of Vegas yeah. and go to those stinky ass carpet ho <laughs> hotels and walk you through. <laughs> Everything smells like cigarette, no filters, and then, you know, we ran into a, a that that dude that says, uh, what does he say? Gotti. You know what I'm talking about online? He's like a, a he's a he's a black dude that's he got like one tooth right here. He's like famous for looking all crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I think I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I yeah, couldn't yeah. think of his name. You know what's funny? Everybody oh, was, the uh, uh, the I, I think I know what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, well, my bad, my bad. Well, he was with a group of people, right? Like like his little entourage. I swear to God, I went up to him. I was like, "Hey, what's this dude's name?" He's like, "I don't fucking know." <laughs> I was like, "Damn, Damn homie, got him, got him." He was out there taking pictures with people for ten bucks. I mean, shout out to him for for being out there faded in Vegas. That wow. was faded, homie. So, if you want to get him for a skit or anything, pull up to Fremont Street. You're gonna see him. Mm. We might need him for an interview. That's better than he was. He was out here in LA for a couple uh, a couple years ago, and he looked. It didn't look too good. It didn't look too good for him out there, to be honest with you. 
I shook the homie's hand and I felt like I caught coronavirus immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I asked my wife for some sanitizer immediately, homie. And I mean that, but it's wow. all good. What else is cracking? You got any more news or? Uh, let's see what we got. Um, the Dodgers. There is a Dodger fan that dodgered out his house in Upland. Is that right? Yeah, and I actually saw some photos online right now when I was researching it. Okay. Dude, he has everything from the Vince Scully sign to, you know who's the Grinch? Who? The Astros. Ah, I love it. <laughs> a real so, Dodger fan. My, my son's a Dodger fan, so I'm going to see where it's at. I'm, I actually might take him this weekend. Check is it out. Right? Is it advertised? Like, where he's at and stuff? Um, I'm pretty sure we can find it. Man, that's yeah. dope. I heard there was some more Dodger news. Baby girl oh, was talking about yeah. it. Yeah, well, man, I can't even pronounce his name. So the Yoshi? Dodgers... Yeah, Do Dodgers just signed a brand new pitcher for 12 years, $325 million, And it's not Otani. His name is... Yoshi no Ubu. I'm probably murdering that name right there, but Yoshinoya? No, definitely. Not. <laughs> nah, for real. But he, he's an elite uh, pitcher, man, and and I mean they're they're going they're going for all the pitchers, bro. If they don't win the, the championship, I don't know what to say. Man, Dodgers! Shout out to the Dodgers for buying buying everything up in Japan right now. How <laughs> they getting everything? That's you, amazing, you're huh? You baseball fan? You Dodger fan? Man, I wish I was. Uh, do you, do you have I a wish I was. I don't. Oh, okay. That's right. I really don't. He's on his grind, homie. He ain't worried That's about right. no sports. He ain't worried about no Dodgers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, shit, we're going to yeah. switch gears. Shout out to the Dodgers. Shout out to all there my people go. in Japan. Much love to them, man. And uh, we hope that you could add a little bit to this L.A. victory, homie. You know, L.A. to Japan has always been connected. So shout out to you there guys. You know. But tonight in the building, and we're going to switch gears real quick, we got my homeboy Spanky Loco. Man. Spanky place. Loco. Come on. If they don't know, 310 West Original. If they don't know, original, original camp, putting it down from back in the days, doing major yeah. things from, from film to music to tattooing to the whole nine. You, you walked the line the whole way through in being successful as a brown skin brother out here in California. So we're going to celebrate wow. that tonight. Thank you. So Thank you. let's talk about it. Homie, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. It's Thank a blessing to be here. We talk about, you know, we always talk about connecting and you're always, hey, positive encouragement. Hey, man, I'll see you keep going. And also, I'm like, hey, man, keep going, carnal. And so I know it's just a matter of time before Hell the, yeah. the stars aligning. For sure. I mean, you know what I'm saying? When I found out you were in town, I was like, we got to do this. We were like, talking about I'm pulling be, up. Yeah, I'm going to be in the town. I got to tap in with the homie. Hell yeah. They said, Brocky. I appreciate that, See how G. my dog is doing. I know you on the go and all that. So Hell just, yeah. Just, like all the other times, see if it if it works out. Hell know? yeah, and it worked out. So that's it worked out for sure. I, I cut my Vegas trip early just to tap in with man, you, homie. Feel, we had to do it, you know. I feel honored, man. I felt bad originally because you know when a homie pulls up, you always want to say yeah to anything. Yeah. And my wife reminded me, we're like, hey, wait a second, how are you gonna do that? We got a week in Vegas, wow. and I was like, yeah. shit, yeah. we're gonna make this work regardless. So we yeah. pulled up, and I'm glad that you were patient and we made it work nah, regardless. It's all good, man. I had some time to you know tap in with the family and hell yeah, do a couple things and paint a little bit. And there you get go. Little, get a little bread and move around and do a couple things. So there you go. Yeah, it's been a blessing. Hell yeah, absolutely. Same. Well, uh, let's talk about it, homie. Let's talk about the original rise. Let's talk about the start of it. Let's talk about where you fell in love with music when you first wow. picked up the microphone. I want to know the original story of wow. Spanky Local. Amazing. I mean, I feel like uh, the arts was always prevalent. Like drawing and being expressive was always prevalent. So the music thing was, I feel like because we, you know, we, we connect with West Coast, you know, music, West Coast sound, we, we had it here, we had K-Day, we had all that, all the beautiful sound coming out of here, NWA and all these amazing things. It was only natural to, to, to be part of that scene and go to the, to the rodeo and just, you know, pick up records or, or you know, turn on K-Day on, on AM. I remember yeah. at a young age, turning on, and people would ask me, oh, what? What's better, FM? Of course, FM was a better frequency, but I always say, no, nah, AM is better because they play NWA, AEPMD, they play all the classics, right? MC Light, all the things that you know the legends were playing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that forged the sound and that forged our background at a at a very very young age. Hell yeah, yeah for sure. And then I think um, as time progressed, going, uh, I went to prison for a little bit out of state when I went to prison that's when I saw the impact of brown brown music you feel me I was in the yard and homies were like man do you fuck with MB writers and I was like man I don't, I don't know what that is like what what are you talking about 
fuck with Conejo? I go, I don't, I don't know. What is this? Man, what you talking about? They from LA, they from uh, uh, your side. What do you mean? I, I'm like, I don't, man, I don't know. I, I listen to MC8 and, you know, Dog Pound and uh, South Central Cartel. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? So that was my first exposure. In prison yeah. was my exposure to, to the music and how impactful it was to our people. Mm -hmm. All the homies in there were going bananas. I remember going to Raza Club. We had a club. It was programming, so you go to the club, you know, get out of your cell, and uh, and you hang out with all the Raza. It was a, you know, a, a, a cultural program. But really, you go and kick it, hang out. Yeah. But the homies would come with tapes and music from the homies, and they'd start playing it, and that was my first exposure. So when I got home, I want to say, I don't know, uh, 2008, so, something like that. That's when I was really motivated and geared towards, you know, kind of pursuing that. And then, of course, you hear like Pocos Pero Locos, and you hear, oh shit, that's Conejo. Okay, let's go. This is what I'm missing out on. Yeah. And uh, and I think persistence and and um, you know the will to to survive and do, that's what really pushed us to actually get into the mix. Yeah. So as I'm sitting there listening to these sounds and and inspired by these homies it was a blessing to be able to rub shoulders with the homies and even like um get distribution like conejo put us on in a major way through through uh through some of his plugs in our early in our early stages in our inf infant infant uh, uh uh you know infancy stages and i and that was a blessing to to have you know an icon a legend be able to you know guide us in the right direction he linked us up with it the deal wasn't all that great but he was caught up in this deal too and you know he was he was only sharing what what he thought was great yeah you know and we got wrapped up in a it wasn't all that but we got we got some ferias the most feria i ever seen out of music yeah. I remember pick going to this this spot and picking up a sixteen thousand dollar check hell yeah for for having our music and you know distributed by emi latin and getting it in sam goodies and you know but that was persistence that was you know being in the studio regularly and being there producing and creating music and trying to do the videos when the internet was not that prevalent. The internet wasn't flooding the game nah, yet. Nah, you had, to, you had to have an actual distribution deal to have your music on the shelves. Right, right. So, I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, between myself and a couple of the homies that were on board to pushing the movement, it was like, um, man, you got this, you know, uh, write something for the other homie and write something. For... So it was like we was always pushing each other to do more and more and more. It was a negative, you know, and I, and I like to say we were younger then. So it was like um, a bunch of homies trying to do entrepreneurial shit, but it was hard, you know? Yeah. It was hard. You know, a lot of the homies were homies. We were, we were, we were, we were youngsters. We didn't, you know, we didn't know what direction we were going. We were trying to do our best, you know? But, but we had a lot of will, Hell and yeah. we was hungry, and we, were, we weren't going to let doors close in our face, and we were persistent. So I feel like that was a key component to, to, to pushing. Hell yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my first introduction to you guys was I remember hitting the car shows and doing all that, and there wasn't too much competition. I'm going to keep it real. It was mm -hmm. like we were just smashing the whole game. And mm -hmm. I remember a new camp coming up, 310 wow. West, and you Vatos were coming in strong. Wow. And I remember you guys had the website. You guys had the, the image. You guys had wow. the CDs dope. And I was like, okay, these are some Vatos to keep our eyes on mm -hmm. and check it out. And then over time, our homeboy Stomper rest in peace connected with you guys. So it was like a little bit wow. bridge that was built, you know what I'm saying? Right. And and uh, I'm gonna rewind it a little bit before that. Right. We were we were at the uh, uh, car show in Fontana and shit got hot. Yes. Bala started flying, yes. people started dropping, and I remember me and my homies were, were scrambling and motherfuckers started hitting the gas and, and, and cars were crashing and everything. Yes. And I remember when I was trying to dip with my homies, the all I saw was like everybody splitting and you Car were right there now. solid as hell with your van. Yeah, and we ran yeah, up to you yeah, guys yeah. and I remember it was like, hey Spanky, what's cracking, homie? Let the homies jump in. No hesitation, boom. You slid the shit open. Me, yeah, my homie yeah, Demon, yeah. a couple homies, and you dropped us off at the crib right right down the street. Yeah. And as we were going down the street on Foothill, I saw Huda just flying back. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, man, the homie saved us. Wow. I'll never forget that, dog. So Amazing. I appreciate you that, that wow. day because who knows what the hell would have happened to us that wow. day if not. We would have probably all been struck out. You that's know what I mean? That's some real um Man, that's some real um, insider stuff. For I don't sure. think ain't, nah, we they ain't don't never know. really Let's put that out there. Nah, we ain't nah. never really talked about never. that. Never. Yeah. That was but an it's active real. day. It was a very it was active, an active day. day. Somebody I remember um 
it was a big intersection mm -hmm. and it was a big ass crowd across the street uh -huh. and then we were on the other side of the yes, street sir. and it was active mm -hmm. and it was a gang of people out there and um it was just so many egos and so much testosterone everyone so was much, turned up man motherfuckers was turned up and then out of nowhere a bottle came flying from the other side mm -hmm. so when that bottle came flying before it even hit the ground somebody pulled out a must have pulled out a pistol and start you know mm -hmm. this person led for sure instead of tossing another bottle back somebody yeah. start dumping so everybody started dumping everybody but it was, was the wild west everywhere. yeah it was bullets. the wild west you could feel them but just zooming by for sure a couple of grades like went right past my head and i remember uh there used to be a site called Khalifa rap mm. and everybody was staying on the other side they were like they were trying to hit the vato and from high power with the big la on his back and mm. i was the only one with that <laughs> So I know it was real because <laughs> when I was turned around running, I remember the, homie, the homie Trigger got shot, Damn. a little cameraman from Hood Times Magazine, no little way. David, and it was like this. I remember very clearly when I turned around to run, the homies were in front of me. I mm. got big ass long legs. I could I could run quick, right? So I remember they were in front of me. I was just like, damn, I could feel all that heat. Wow. And then when I turned around and I, I ran past, a, I got in front of a BMW and I ducked. When I turned around, everybody that was in front of me were all on the floor leaking. Wow. And I was like, wow. thank God. It's another uh, another uh, moment in my life that I knew God was right there watching me. You know what I mean? Watching all of us. I mean, watching all of us. We honestly, we probably were not um, as cautious as we should have been. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're saying we were still standing there while everybody was leaving, yeah, that's probably that's probably real. I don't I don't recall too too well, but that's exactly what 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 feels like we would have done. Nah, for sure. It's kind of like see see what was what was popping. Hundred like, percent. You know? And what's really going on for you sure know? for sure yeah infamous day in chicano rap history i'm yeah. glad that none of us were really involved with it just uh bystanders but shit, we survived it you know what i'm saying yeah. god bless homie and, yeah for sure homie likewise so thank you for for saving me and the homies dog I, wow. I mean that to this day i still talk to my homie demon my homie demon went to prison like right after that and got out like 10 years later and he still brought that up he's like hey fool remember that one time one time we almost got our heads blown off and that fool spanky local saved us i was like yeah dog for wow. real he definitely got us in his whip and, and took us off because if if you would have jumped in the van and dipped we would have just been the last ones right there and we'd have been done you know? i'm not sorry criminal we gotta go <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> Good luck, homie. Settle. That would be wow. gotcha. Wow. But but by the like, grace of God, what? we all made it out of there. You know yes. what I'm saying? And, yes. and there, there's some people uh, unfortunately didn't, but but wow. hey, destiny is destiny. But I want to talk about the fact that you guys were smashing, you guys were putting yes. it down, you guys right. were building your name, and you guys made your own entity in the game. What was right. the moment where you decided to say, okay, it's 310 West. I'm trying to help out a bunch of people but maybe they don't have the same drive as me. They don't have the same vision. It's time to just push Spanky Local. When was that moment? Uh, I feel like that was forced. I feel like in my heart, I always felt like I was overworked and doing too much to help too many people. I was spreading myself instead of, you know, focusing on me as a brand or focusing on myself. I always felt like that wouldn't have been a good homie. I wasn't a good homie by you know, saying, well, let me focus on Spanky Loco. Let me focus on, you know, doing my music. Let me focus on, because, you know, I gave my word to everyone that I was gonna, you know, make this situation great for all of us. But I feel like I had the most investment in that. You feel me? I had, you know, working with the music, doing the promotion, um, writing music, uh, going and overseeing covers. I mean, I was just like very, what, what do you call that, uh, a micromanager. You know, it's like I had a, oh, let me see the cover, or oh, let me see, or oh, let me hear the music, or no, that don't sound right, or, you know, double checking, triple checking everything, you know, and I don't know, the energy I felt like, it was just, it, most of the time it was my, my own. My they own. weren't matching it. Nah, I felt and it. I couldn't expect that from homies that didn't understand or have the same passion as mm -hmm. me, you know what I mean? And I try to make it work as, as best that I could but but the the reason I say it was forced because that at one point the economy made it so that like promoters didn't want the 310 West there. You know, and I push it, hey the homies wanna come, the homies gotta come. No, 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 no. We only want you to come. We only we only paying for you to come. And that's what it started to turn to turn into. And and some homies, you know, it digested well with them and some homies it didn't digest well with them. You know what I'm saying? 
but it it was uh it was out of my hands at that point. You were either happy for me, and if you weren't happy for me, then you wasn't really my homie from the gate. Straight up. You know what I mean? You wasn't my homie. You didn't love me like that. They were just for the they're for the ride type shit. You know? Yeah. So that all it it came to an end, you know, as quick as it started. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And people had, oh, what's up with this guy? What's up with that guy? I'm like, fuck, if you only knew, I wrote half of that album. Yeah. Or if you knew only knew, I gave him those features. Those are my features. Those are shit that I, I, I blessed the homie with. Or, man, he couldn't even finish the album. I had to finish him or whatever the case might be. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, I think that was a, a crucial part to, 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 I don't know, getting the homie situated in, in other things that they were good at. Hell yeah. And I had to continue going. I had kids. I had a huge responsibility still. And, again, a lot of it was negativity driven. Like, we were... We, we love that shit. Like, niggas wanted problems. We were excited to, to come on, let's go. Yeah. That was just the attitude, you feel me? That was the attitude. And I don't know. Things change. Times change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that crucial to fight with everyone. Oh, someone's hating on us. Oh, write this full back. Tell them let's meet up. Like, come on. Ridiculousness. That was that was that that path of maturity that had to get grown past. We all were there. We we're all there at one point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's part of it. Yeah. But sure. it also helped establish who we were in the streets. Cause I could also say, being part of high power, we had the same problem. It was like me, mm. Capone, a couple artists were taking it serious. But there was a gang of hang around homies that wanted to be there. Gang of, of homies course. wanted to just be there partying, putting on the jerseys, putting on the shit. It got right. to the point where Capone had a good heart where he would just let everybody. And I was the one that was closing doors on motherfuckers in the hotels. Like, nah, I'm going to stomp this fool out, <laughs> take this fool's jersey off. Yeah. Because I had a passion of what we were doing. I, wow. I, I was invested in just like you were. And right. I was going to the to the photo shoots and doing all the shit and cleaning up problems and all the different shit. And it's like, nah, 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 nah. Not all these hang around motherfuckers are going to benefit from the hard work we right. put in. So I could right. definitely relate to that. Right. So so what what was the next step after that? What What was the... The growth after that. How did Spanky Local come from doing that to getting the big features and starting becoming actually known and being in the game to where you were respected by your peers and starting to make a name in this Chicano rap thing? Shit, man, you 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 making it sound amazing. I mean, hey, homie, <laughs> history's history. <laughs> you making it? You sound, did some dope shit, homie. man. And we gotta give you. our flowers. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you homie. Who's gonna do it for us, homie? Huh? You know what I mean? God bless. Thank Hell yeah, you, homie. I appreciate that. Um, I mean, uh. I feel like it was important for us to be invested. We already invested the time. Yeah. We invested the money to get, you know, bands and equipment and studios. And we had a couple of studios that we was invested in. And so I feel like um, doing things the right way and, you know, getting features and paying for features. And that's why when you hear like, oh, I won't pay for a feature. I'm on me. It's part of the game. For sure. You know, it's like saying, well, I'm not going to pay for promotion. Like you know, people's time is valuable. Straight up. So you you, you know you wanna you wanna make people feel like they're 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 worth. You wanna make them the you know feel their worth, right? You wanna compensate them for their time. And I feel like it was only fair, especially as newcomers, to say here, let's drop twenty five hundred on this verse. Let's drop three stacks on this verse. Let's go take care of the homie and shoot him his fifteen hundred for that that chorus or whatever the case might be, you know. That, that was the, the the motivator, doing things the right way because we were the newcomers. Hell yeah. And we were expected to lose. You know what I'm saying? So I think making the investment and going, going f you know, f f full full uh, full throttle with it was super super crucial to me. Hell and yeah. and, to, and to some of the partners that I worked with at the time. And they were workhorses too, you know? Yeah. A couple of hits were, were workhorses too. And, but again, again, negativity driven. You know, not, a, not all the money was good money. Like... You know, it was, um, you know, like, we we probably could have done better with what we had, you feel me? But it was really a negative situation. You know, we were all coming from trauma. Some of the homies had parents. Some of the homies didn't have parents. Some of the homies, you know, you know, were, were on dope or, uh, you know, whatever the case might be that was hindering from, you know, hindering each and every one of us from having a really fulfilled and happy life. It's like we wanted to blame this guy and blame that guy and hate, you know, uh, hate will drive you to do interesting things, you feel me? And especially when you feel on the defense, oh, yeah, man, he just, he hating on us. Let's go get this guy. Let's start, let's pack this fool out. 
or whatever the case might be. And that was the attitude for a long time, a long time. And I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm happy to say that I have a, a different mind frame, a different state of mind, a different, you know what I'm saying? My, my cup is filled with different things now. But I had to live all these experiences to really come to a different understanding of what life is about. For yeah. me right now, life is a whole nother viaje. It's a whole nother trip, for sure. And it's a blessing that you got to see it, homie, because a, yeah. a lot of homies never had a chance to have that change. Right. And they might have went down the wrong path. They might have, you know, got dismotivated and not used their blessings to the, the absolute potential that they were meant to, right? Yeah. But that's what we call fate and destiny, homie. So sure. it is what it is. Um, let's say when you were in the game, obviously there was different things. There was, there was a situation that I don't want to highlight too much, but it's part of your history. Yes. We, we all knew the realness of Spanky Loco in a situation, in a studio, that something happened where there was a beef and someone got caught slipping. Mm. Uh, for the new for the new era, I don't want to highlight that because it's obviously part of history and, and, and you know, it's something that we've got to move past. For the new generation, right. for the new generation, that they just diss and they beef and they, they never get to see each other, they never do all that. The fact that you were able to get past that negativity and grow past that and become more of a man that focuses on art, mm. music. How, how did that, would you say that, that that moment in your history, because it was an infamous moment in your history, in your mm. career, would you say that that was something that followed you for a while? Would, would you say that's something that you had to shake? Is that something that, like, explain that? Man, if I got a dollar for every time someone would ask me about that, during that era, man, I'd be a billionaire. You feel me? Because it was so prevalent. It was so, you know what I mean? It was yeah. so meaningful to people. And to us, it was, it wasn't that, um, it was a matter of survival. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for us, we were, we were really on the defense. We were just a little homies, you know? It wasn't like a big, like a big, um, you know, a big mentor saying, come on, homies. Let me work with you. I got you guys. Yeah. Let me lift you. I'm with you. Here, let's do this feature. Tip me or pay me. Whatever the case, the business might. I got you or what? I'll work with you or whatever. And I it was, it was like, um, like I'm a smash on you fools. Like you fools think you're hard, but I'm the hardest. And I ain't nobody gonna touch me. Ain't nobody gonna fuck with me, especially you scrubs. And that's how I felt. And for all the hard work we had put in, for me to like, you know, tip my hat to you and 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 bow my head to you and give you my hand so that you can accept my friendship and then at the end spit in my face, it was really devastating for us. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think he understood the the impact that he made by not befriending us. Nah, I'm not saying you had to be my friend or else we were gonna come in. No, what I'm saying is you didn't have to offend us. You didn't have to disrespect us. You didn't have to tell tell me, oh yeah, I'll work with you. And then leave me at the studio on three occasions Damn. with a paid engineer and waiting for you so that at the end you, you not show up. That's like spitting in my face. Yeah, homie, I'll be there. I'm gonna be there tonight. And we setting up and we're we nada. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like um again, egos. It did something to my, you know what I'm saying? It did something to my to my self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? It did something to my core. It made me feel like, okay, now you, you saying something. And then of course, you know, the media, online, you know, now the internet is popping. Now, you know, now there's means for people to give their opinion and all of that just added to the situation. And of course, um, the first opportunity that I had to, to encounter this gentleman and, and, and kind of rectify the issue. Now, you know, I, I'm not saying I was in the right, I'm not saying I did the right thing. I'm not saying that, you know, but it's just the way things worked out. I felt cornered. And so I felt like I need to have the upper hand in the situation. You feel me? And I've heard a lot of, a lot of morals like, oh no, don't be careful that, you know, like that's scary. Don't fuck with that guy or hey, be careful. Like you don't know who he knows or whatever the case might be. And I'm like, man, you don't know me. I don't give a fuck, you know? So I think that was, that was, you know, a few things that played 
a factor in that situation. People might not understand, be like, oh, you just a cloud chasing bully. You know what I'm saying? You just trying to take what he got, but it was never the case. I wanted to befriend that man, a legend, a legend. I wanted to tip my hat. I would, I would have loved to say I had a record with you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I've heard songs with him in Cocaine. I heard songs with him in various legends. I thought, man, you're, you're doing things that I dream of doing. These are people I grew up watching on uh, video jukebox Straight in up. the hood. You feel me? Like that type of deal, you know. And 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 to see homies actually living the dream and being in the mix that was amazing to me. But when the homies treating you like dirt or making you less, and now he's bad mouthing you on 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 podcasts and 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 pages and things, now you're like, man, really? So that's why the things happen the way they happen I see you know what I'm saying and maybe it wasn't the right the right move but it was to me it was the only move and this was checkers not chess you feel me yeah. at the end if I would have sat there and sucked my thumb he would have smashed on us there would have been no spanky loco 310 west none of that wow you feel me so we got put in a tough place it's not an excuse it's not saying oh I got put in a tough place so I wouldn't do something stupid it's just the way things turned out you know what I'm saying, and, and I made a, you know, I've, of course, I never made amends, amends with the man. Like, I'm, it, I'm sure it, it hurt him severely. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it hurt him severely. And who knows? Maybe if things would have been different, of course, maybe we would have been friends. You know what I'm saying? And even today, it's like, um, I'll get, you know, I'll get, randomly, I'll get a man, hey, fuck you, and whoa, 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 and he was the legend, not you, and. Like, man, I agree, homie. He really was. And these pens, you feel that strong. You know what I'm saying? So. Spoken like a gentleman, homie. There's two sides to every story. And uh, I think it's important to, the, as, as a culture, that we don't go past, go down those same roads because I feel like those moments we learn from, right? right. And, and we could grow. And I think that, like you said, it would have been more of an impact working together. But fate, fate is what it is, and it is what it is. I want to ask you on the on the outcome of that. Did it, did that? Do you feel like that hindered your career in any way? Do you feel like maybe promoters got scared to book you? Do you feel like people shied away from you? Like, what was the aftermath of that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know, well, I mean, um, for a long time, yeah, it was like a lot of negativity. Yeah, I had to eat that. You feel me? Like, I don't think normal people could accept like getting messages all day. I hate you. I wish you were dead, like all kind of crazy. When you come out here, we're gonna get you and forever, homie. Like you gotta have a thick skin to see that stuff all day long. For sure. And that was the story of my life for a long time. So I kind of accepted being the most hated. I kind of accepted that role. I was like, well, you know, I gotta accept that. I gotta, you know, I know, I know what I'm into. I know what I'm doing. I know who I'm hanging out with. You know what I'm saying? Hang out with them and you're gonna be like them. For sure. So it was the energy that I was putting out, most definitely. So, energy is very powerful. People don't realize it, right? Come on. It's like, um, it's like, how are you going to fill people's cup negatively? Or are you going to fill them up with something good? Is it even worth it? Like, pick your battles. Is it worth it? At the end of the day, is it worth it? Right? Because 10 seconds, homie, could diffuse a lot of things. Count to 10 and you'll be all right. But if you don't and you're, oh, no, nah, if this guy, or, oh, man, you know, it worked out for me. God bless. But imagine some guy that's like, I hate this guy. I can't stand him. I'm going I'm to see him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you're playing with fire. For sure. Really. But that's just, you know, again, I'm on some other stuff. I'm I'm on another viaje. I'm living by a lake and I'm on some preserving peace and Hell yeah. empowering rasa and i'm on some other shit now. you grew from it i'm on some other shit oh yeah Hell yeah. yeah i'm on brown entrepreneurship brown empowerment and i'm going to visit kids and institutions i'm beautiful donating time and money and creating my nonprofit to go out and support our kids Hell you know yeah. what i'm saying our peers kids i can't work with adults i don't work with lifers i don't work with because i don't i don't know if i can um, handle that responsibility so before a little homie turns into a lifer maybe I could breathe some positivity into the little homie and be like look check it out it ain't all that 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't all that. We got yeah. choices. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And if you use your options, you could be very successful. All you got to do is get up and get it. So that's where I'm at. Hell yeah. Yeah. What was the moment that you made that decision? What was the moment or the changing point like that you said, you know what? It's, it's enough of this. It's time to start going down this path. So I've been in uh, I've been in the Pacific Northwest a little over two years now, and I feel like that move was eye opening for me because not only because it's a change of lifestyle, but because it's a change of lifestyle for my kids too. You know what I mean? I don't want my kids to grow up in the environment that I grew up in. My teachers didn't love me; they weren't trying to nurture my mind. I administrators didn't care about us. Or else we wouldn't have been in the street like that. Straight up. You feel me? We wouldn't have been like that. So I think handing over my kids to the state or handing my kids over to an institution or to a school or depending on someone else to raise them and depending on them to, to nurture them and love them and push them, that's tough, homie. You got to advocate for yours. You can't expect that when you drop them off that they're in great hands just because it, there's a building that says school on it. Absolutely. You feel me? You got to be in there and be like, um... Uh, why is my son missing, you know, uh, the, these these credits? Why did my son didn't turn in these pages? Why is my daughter not attending? Why, you know, oh, well, I don't know. Ask the counselor. Okay, well, let's go ask the counselor. Okay, let's go talk to the teachers now. Okay, now let's all have a, a sit down with the principal and the teacher and the counselor and let's t talk about it. And, you know, when your kids sh see that you give a fuck, then maybe things will start turning around. And not everyone is for everyone. You know, you got parents, like I had a homeboy, uh, he was adopted, and the homie run a fucking muck, right? And his parents were so nice, beautiful people. They lived right there on the block. And uh, and I and I felt horrible for them. You know what I'm saying? I felt bad for them, because this guy was a fucking menace, right? But destiny. You know what I'm saying? Destiny. It's like, uh, why were they challenged like that? Only God knows. Only God knows why they were challenged like that. Sweetest people in the world to be having this little demonic motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> living in their house. You know what I mean? Yeah. But 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 it goes to show you not, not not everything you're handed is for you. You feel me? I struggle. I tell my son, I'm like, hey, moro. How am I going to go talk to these youngsters at these institutions, but at home we're not 100%. We got to be whole at home, and we got to be 100 at home before we can go out and talk to the little homies. Good point. And be like, oh, hey, do this, do that, hey, try to do this, try. It starts at home. You feel me? So I feel like it's a lot of things, homie. It's it's me seeing my, me and my kids, and now my morals are a little bigger. My moral dresses like a straight homie, and I don't want to take that from him. I don't want to be like, oh, no, you look awful. You look awful and you act awful. No, just how you want, but be a good person. Be good people. You know what I'm saying? Be a homie. Yeah, just like a homie. But be good people. Be good gente. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You're pushing the culture. You're representing your own man. You're representing Chicanismo. You're representing the cultura. It's okay. But show up to class on time. Be respectful to your classmates. Do the work, help your mom at home with chores. When I go out of town, don't be all bummed out that you gotta come and help me at the table and run my booth. My moro, you're 13 years old. I took him to out of town to run my booth and so, you know quote tattoos and you know do do amazing things with me. But it's like you know you got kids. It's like pulling teeth. It's like fuck, come for on. sure they never had, they never were in love with the shit that you yeah, are. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's okay. I don't want them to have to tattoo and have to do music and but if i was a doctor i take his ass to the hospital if i was a doctor i take him to to see the x-rays and go you know uh, you know the c-scan and show him the machines and all of that shit if i was a lawyer i'll take him to my practice i'll take him around the firm i you know give him some books and whatever but i'm none of that this is the, the hand i was dealt this is what god gave me so I'm only giving him the little bit that I got, right? The decision is up to him to do whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? Little Spanky, baby Spanky, the rest of my my little my little tropa, you know? Oh yeah. The rest of my little troop. Yeah. And, and they know daddy goes out there and gets it. 
I go out there and trap it. I go out there and make it happen. You feel me? I got to. Ain't no choice. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. What was what was the moment that you decided it's time to dip out of Cali? When was the moment? What was the mentality? What was the thought process? And it wasn't even like I gotta leave California. What's interesting was we were in the pandemic, and so my shop was closed down. My landlord was 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 being very difficult. It was not one thing. It was several things that had already been fed up with quite a few things. Where we were at, my kids couldn't come out and like have a good time in the patio. Like the neighbors were tra- on this madre. So I go, you know what? We're gonna go where um where where I've worked at periodically, where I always get appointments, where we get bread at, and it's beautiful. I go, so I, we'll, we'll take a trip for the summer. We'll go get an Airbnb for a couple months, whatever. I looked at a couple months Airbnb. I go, no, I'm better off doing a, a short-term, you know, lease or whatever. So my lease was up. I ended up getting a spot um, randomly. Randomly, it was like this and, and just big the spot on the... <laughs> Yeah, I said it. I'm like, my wife's like, how about here? I'm like, wow, that's fucking out there. That's way out. She's like, it, it's all out there. All of it. It's out there. All of it. So it don't matter. You're going to be far as fuck. So I think it was like now the fear of, oh, shit, this shit is really happening. And then I just pulled the trigger. I go, you know what? Fuck, let's just give it a shot. It was the best decision I ever made. God put us there. I didn't. God did. Oh, yeah. Because we landed in a nice little tech cool little townhouse little tri-level townhouse nothing too crazy but my kids could run around and they go outside and fuck around and they get to see the snow these days the snow touches their face and you know what i'm saying we got a lake down the way and mall in the small town where i'm at coincidentally only fucking mall in the whole area you know what i mean and and it's taught me new things it's opened my eyes to a lot of new things and since also culturally we're not the majority I feel like that's really been eye-opening to me to 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 stay, I think, progressive and to do things for us. It's like um you can't have people of another demographic be like, oh no, you you can't come to the table. You look you don't look the part or you don't look right or you know you're too brown or you're so with all those things potentially hindering us, I'm like, hell no, we need to be out here politicking and that's where i think my whole i think my con my 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 contrast of of how important it is to use our platform for something positive was really struck me and so for the last year it's been developing my 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 nonprofit, knocking on doors on institutions and schools pulling up in schools where uh, Chicana girls are not allowed to eat in the cafeterias. They're hiding in the restrooms where you defecate to have lunch because we're not the we're not the majority. Damn. So there's five Chicanas in a school of 500 white kids and now they feel out of place so they're hiding in the restroom to have lunch. And I think my position is going to be like, nah, mija, come out of there. Shit, we, 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 we are extremely important here. You know what I'm saying? If if nobody's told you that, I'm here to tell you that you're extremely important. Oh yeah. And I think with the accolades and being able to say like, oh, we travel and done television and done music and and you know have a brand and push clothing and art and all these beautiful things, it's like, man, that that tool ain't for me. That tool is is only a gift to give to everyone else. That's my perception. Oh yeah. You feel me? That's a blessing too to give out, to give away. It's not for me to keep. So me to be able to push homies and push that agenda and say, man, you could do it. And that's important to me because I don't want my kids to fall under that. Oh, he just is like a homie. Don't don't let him in. Don't let him at the table. He can't eat with us. He can't be part of us. He can't make no money with us. That's the last thing that I want. I ain't busting my ass so that my kids could be without or be told that they're not allowed at the table. You feel me? Hell yeah. So... Yeah, a lot of different things, carnal, that's really, uh, it's the signs, you feel me? Yeah. God puts them there. You pay attention or you don't. When you cover your third eye by using drugs and, you know, uh, blaming yourself and holding on to this trauma, and that's where that's where our downfall is. You feel me? And, and that's for, too easy for us. Easy. 
Come on, let's go get a 40, man. Forget all that, man. Forget about your problems, crimes. Come and get fucked up with me, man. Forget all that's too much work. That's too much work. Forget that. Come on, let's get loaded. That's easy. You feel me? But that's not the answer. The answer is putting in good work. Go, you know, going above and beyond, putting your putting your good foot forward and say, nah, this ain't right. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to be about. And faith is an important thing for me. Straight up. Going to church. You know what I'm saying? I don't promote it. I don't push that. I'm not a preacher. I'm not none of that. I, all I could do is lead by example and with platforms like this to say, hey, this is what, what worked out for me. This is what fills my cup. You know what I'm saying? When I walk to the lake and I'm drinking my cappuccino, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and walking my, my, my perro and we're around the lake and I feel like I'm I'm closer to God. You feel me? I feel like now I'm, I'm you know, like... Uh, connected spiritually and you ain't gotta have a gang of bread to say oh i'm closer to god because we ain't we ain't millionaires you know what i'm saying we ain't millionaires but we we trying the little you know little by little we we figure it out rub two quarters to make a dollar you feel me but that's the cost some of us rather pay for an expensive ass car and be in a shitty ass house for sure you know what i'm saying how about we work with our our family members and say hey Let's all work together and let's get a decent house in a beautiful area. Not a beautiful house in a shitty area because then you're back in the same, you know what I'm saying? Routine. You're back in the same situation. Straight it's up. like your ex kids are exposed to that, you know, to, 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 to that systemic situation. So I'm on some other shit, carnal. It's beautiful. Dispensa. Nah, I mean, I love to hear it. And I love to see that the, the growth, homie, because that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm going to be real, like, Man. doing this podcast, getting closer to God, doing God got me, it steps to, towards that direction. But I'm still in my comfort zone. I still haven't left mm -hmm. California. I've been still, I still be in touch with the homies, the whole nine, as usual. But there's a point mentally where I lay down at night and I think, how could I grow past this? Mm -hmm. how, could, how could I get out of my comfort zone? I wish... That I had the 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 fearlessness to just leave Cali and go somewhere else, homie. When I go out there yeah. and I see the lakes and I see the beautiful trees and I see things, I'm like, damn, this is beautiful. But then there's a fear, like, man, I'm not sure if I could get it out here. Like, I, I don't belong here. here. Exactly. I'm out of place here. Mm. I might not be wanted here. I'm gonna stick out here, straight up. I'm not gonna correlate with anyone. Of course, that's what they want you to feel. That's why we. You know, that's the why the economy got to us living in a certain area, brown people live in another area, rich people live in another area, white people live in one area, black people live in another. It's all systemic. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Why you got more traffic cameras in an impoverished area than you have it in a rich area? Why you got more liquor stores in an impoverished area than you have it in a nice area? Why you have more poison, more things to hinder you. Why there's more police? Why there's more um, uh, uh, traffic stops and, and and checks and sobriety points and you know what I'm saying? It's all systemic. Cause they know you're gonna fall for that trap. You feel me? They know they're gonna break you like that. Easy, monitor you, break you, take your money. That's easy. But when you start thinking, well, oh, fuck, let me not part of be that. Let me not be part of that ecosystem, right? Let me do something uh, unorthodox. Like go to an area where it's people that like me are not there. Now you're not what you're doing is planting the flag. Now what you're doing is, yeah, we do belong here. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what my neighbors say when I step outside. I don't give a fuck that they see a Mexican flag in front of my door. Man, that's on purpose. I got a little flag a little thing on the on my porch and it's a little mexican flag right there yes we mexican don't be hurt by that you feel me but we work hard we got shit we trying to have shit you feel me so really it's up to you it's up to you to break that cycle straight up and it takes a lot more than just um you know say no i ain't gonna talk to this guy it's 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 i think a little more 
deeper than that. You know, it's thinking about your whole environment. It's like, man, I got to change this and that and this and that and that. You know what I'm saying? A whole detox. They don't make you less of a man. I don't think so. Because if somebody were to say, oh, why you leave over there to take care of your kids? That's not a homie. That's an idiot. That's, That's an idiot not a homie. way of thinking, too. That's not a homie. I don't care what people... Oh, oh, you're not over... Like, do you pay my bills? No. So what do you care where I live? What do you care what I do? You know what I'm saying? It's like um, my priority, because you don't know how I grew up. You don't know the environment I grew up in. You don't know the people I hung around. You don't know the lack of resources and the lack of love and the lack of interest to helping me be a contemporary artist. I Man, I love drawing since I was a little kid. I love drawing, homie. All I would do was get in trouble for that. My teachers hated me for it. All I would do was draw in class. My mom was frustrated because of it. Now imagine they would have nurtured me. Imagine they would have said, we're gonna send you to the School of Fine Arts. Just imagine, instead, I swam upstream the whole time. The whole time was a battle. You feel me? Self-expression was tattooing in the barrios, going from hood to hood. When when tattooing wasn't on Instagram and on the internet, and for those that don't know, my early beginnings was tattooing before the music. So even some people say, oh, look at him, rapper, trying to tattoo. He's stepping in our lane. No, dispensa. I've been doing this for quite a while. Tattooing homies, tattooing in different barrios. I go tattoo homies from uh, Compton, tattoo homies from West LA, from Santa Monica, from different barrios. You know what I'm saying? That was my early beginnings. I love that shit. And I was always trying to be creative, and homies are like, nah, man, I don't want drawings. I want the hood, and I want this. I want and I was always the, no, let me do this, you know? That was the early beginnings, you feel me? But I feel like all upstream, all the battle, you know what I'm saying? Had I been given the tools, how successful we would have been. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I think extremely successful. But it was all a battle, and that's that's okay. I thank God for all the struggles. God bless me, and only me. Uh, not anyone around me immediately in my family that could, because I don't think nobody could go through those things and, and be okay. You feel me? It was a lot of pushback, a lot of no, a lot of... A lot of all of that and i feel like um the more you told me no the more i was gonna keep trying the more i was gonna keep at it you know what i'm saying even with that the tattooing oh oh he's a rapper trying to tattoo nah hell no nah. and now i'll shut down uh uh convention uh tattoo conventions you know what i'm saying I'm, i'll be the first motherfucker at the convention this is my word and there's a lot of motherfuckers that see me at these conventions i'll be the first one there at the door, setting up shop. 10 in the morning, 10, 20 in the morning. I'll be the first one at the door to go in and set up my booth. And I'll be the last one to leave. That's on everything. It's like the, the homies that I take, man, be there first and be the last one to leave. It's only a weekend. We came to trap. We didn't come to get high. We didn't come to get drunk. We came to work. So if you're concerned about OSHA regulations and getting your lunch at 12 and, you know, taking a break at nine and nah, homie, it's from 10 in the morning till two, three in the morning. You feel me? That's the schedule when you go to these events. That's the schedule when you go and set up shop at a, at a, at a, at a tattoo convention. Yeah. But I make sure I promote. You're going to see spanky local banners everywhere that I'm paying for to be a, a sponsor, not, not only a guest artist, but I pay to be a sponsor at some of these national conventions. And so I think, like, I'm doing my part as a, you know what I mean, a, a true artist in the in the game to 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 really validate my 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 worth, you know, within the community. And I don't copy stencils, I don't copy patterns or nothing. It's all freehand, pintero freehand, tattoos. Straight up. And I want tattoos the same from the other. And it's stuff that I worked at because I didn't want to be. I don't want to take no shortcuts. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, yeah, he took the easy route. Oh, you know, he's doing it off of his name or he's doing it. No. Every time I challenged myself is because there was something challenging in front of me that made me push it to the next level and to the next level and to the next level. When you're a born loser, you got to fight. When you're born to lose, you got to fight. and You got to keep pushing. You got to push the boundaries. 
at least for me, that's the only way. That was the only recipe. There was yeah. no here, take this, or here we got you, here, this for you, or Ben compa, this is nah hell nah. It was like here he comes, close the doors. You know what I mean? You gotta yeah. kick your way in. Come on. Hell yeah. So God is great, man. Absolutely. And those moments of victory, when you kick in them doors because you believe in yourself and nobody else did, it feels so much better when you get there, right? Man, I get to rejoice with my family. You know, I get to rejoice with 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 um you know comrades in the game that that also need that encouragement i ain't never made this kind of money spanky i ain't never done a 500 dollar palm size tattoo i ain't never done you know what i'm saying but it's like on me we're 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 so undervalued you feel me like um we're so tokenized as mexicans as latinos it's like here's 20 bucks you just got out of prison here's 20 bucks for a tattoo like, motherfucker, you spent half your life in prison, right? Learning the craft, practicing, perfecting the craft. Give this man 500 bucks. He invested his life into this. Don't matter if he just got out of prison. He's doing his best. He's trying his hardest. Lift this man. Don't don't cheat this man. Treat this man, right? But we don't find the value. We're so intimidated with, you know, what 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 we represent and that's a lack of uh accolades a lack of empowerment right and that's why i tell people hey no disrespect i ain't trying to sound like an asshole but it's a thousand dollars to start for any tattoo i don't touch the machine if it's not a thousand dollars or more you know what i mean that's my minimum but there's a reason for that you're gonna go to venice to venice beach right and you okay with paying 15 16 dollars for a grilled cheese sandwich and eight dollars for a, an americano so when white people do it handcrafted made by hand homemade when white people do it it's beautiful it's okay you feel me we not allowed to do that you know what i'm saying show me how many how many businesses you can see down Abbot Kenny that represent us or any other gentrified area where you see a Latino business and we're charging $20 for a concha or we're charging $10 for a Mexican mocha or whatever the case there's no confidence in our in our struggle we can undersell our stuff or oh, our coffee no it's two dollars here or else they're not gonna buy it I've had my I have I had a primo, he's like, fool, your shirts are too expensive. You're gonna have to like drop the price on them. Like, fool, cause you say so? No way. It's like I designed them. I sat there and busted my ass. I had to put them together. We hand package them between me and my family. I ain't got a, a company that does it. It's like it's all handmade. It's all with love. It's all from the core. And it took me all this try all this time and all this struggle. To, to to realize this moment right so why the fuck would i give it away Straight up. matter of fact i'm gonna charge a little more now just because you said that and maybe it's asshole things in your perception but the way i see it if you're willing to go and pay for this and that make a little investment in in someone make an investment in someone you feel me you like someone's art you like someone's tattoo work you love someone's food you love what they do go and invest in their business Ain't nothing wrong with that. At all. Nah. And we shouldn't be scared as, as you know, brown entrepreneurs and feel like we got to give it away in order for people to come. Do your best. Promote. Show up. Do, do the most you can. Expose your product. Be confident in what you do. You know what I mean? They embody what you're, what you're about. Then you can go and say, hey, this is my minimum. Si quieres. And if not, there's another spot. I'm sure plenty of different places you know what i'm saying it's the same at the conventions i don't want to tell my people like yeah we're gonna go get bread but then i'm there like oh man we gotta we gotta walk in for a hundred bucks you guys want to take it like i don't know if anybody nah i don't manifest that i don't manifest none of that oh you think we're gonna do i know we're gonna do good we ain't been to this city but they're gonna love us homie and we come with arte 
We come with clothing. We come with tattoo supplies, tattoo bags, merchandise. We come with music. We come with collectibles. We come with all kind of hard work, uh, handcrafted, you know what I'm saying, materials that I think people will be proud of to have. Ask my other collectors. You know what I'm saying? Ask my other collectors. Oh, yeah. We put our heart and soul into it. That's dope. So I say ain't no shame in, in pushing the envelope. And I think going, you know, getting getting out of our comfort zone and doing these things that make us more relevant, make us more important, make us of value, and say, nah, we didn't gotta live in the slums. Shit, move over. Let us live in the hills too. Right? But come correct. But come correct. Put in your good work. You know? Like you said, uh, how do you feel when when you when you hit those accomplishments at the end of the night, yeah, you bust your ass. You're like, man, we did it. The day's old. We we handled that, right? And tomorrow, putazos again. That's it. Don't stop. Come on. Don't stop. Would you say? Obviously, like I said, I'm gonna rewind to the beginning. Yes. My perception of seeing you come in the game, there was a lot of artists and groups that came in, but they weren't coming with the branding. They weren't coming with the merchandise. They weren't coming with the with the with the solidness of the camps and the representing the flag of, of, of the brand mm. would you say that that being in the rap game and learning that hustle Oof. has been something that helped you kick in the door in the tattoo convention game man come on i mean i used to stand out here in, in san bernardino at these gas stations with a handful of cds when i didn't have a pot to piss in i stand out there with a handful of you know boxes of cd be like what's up come here 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 you go take a flyer hey would you like hey you like that my catch line was like do you like rap music Duh, everyone likes rap music. Hey, what's up, homie? You like rap music? That was my intro. Hey, you like rap music? <laughs> Boom. I was, he wasn't going to tell me no. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I like rap. Oh, check this out. Double your money back, guaranteed. I know you're going to love this. Nine times out of ten, it was, you know what I'm saying? Guaranteed sale. And I think that definitely was a driving factor. You know what I'm saying? Being out the trunk with it. Um going up north, going to Oakland, to the Oakland flea market, you know what I'm saying? Strapping our, strapping our, you know, strapping our boots and saying, come on, man, you're not scared, are you? Why are you scared? Why, you know, oh, you scared? You, no, we're not scared. Okay, cool, come on. Pack everything, put it in the van. We going to Oakland today. Shit, we going to Fresno too. Pack it all up. And I think those were the things that were important for, for success. It's saying, man, fuck it, we're gonna do it. Like, oh no, we don't belong there. Oh, we can't be there. No, let's not go there. Now you just doing the same shit that the system wants you to do. Make you feel marginalized. Yeah. Make you feel like you don't belong. Make you feel like you gotta be over here, not over there. It's separating us. You feel me? It's the old way, it's the way that they always had control. But it, it's people like us that kicking them, them, them doors and break that control and break the chains and break the mold to be able to be what they don't want us to be. And I think that's important, homie, because same here. I don't think there's nobody in this whole block, these whole businesses that do what we do. Mm -hmm. And when we first came here, everybody, when we were trying to get a building, everybody was closing the door. Everybody's like, what you doing? Of course. Every, oh, you guys, I had no, we lie. don't sell weed. Yeah, we you can't sell weed here. Yeah, nah, even, nah, <laughs> nah, even on just some rap shit. I was like, nah, we're wow. gonna do this. So we had to even try to lie and say, nah, we're gonna do merchandising and this and that. And that, that's what I told, at one point I had my confidence, I told Critical, I said, we done lied to every single leasing we do, place. We do Christian rap. Yeah, <laughs> but I said, fuck it. To this building right here, I said, yeah. we do rap, we do this, we do yes. that, and boom, the doors open. There you me. go. God knows, though, homie. Straight up. That means them other places weren't for you. It wasn't for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As beautiful as you wanted it to be, it wasn't for you. God knew it was for you. Straight Has up. it worked out here? Hell yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah. Come on. Yeah. Thank God. Gracias Cause God. Because God knew. Straight up. Straight you up. You feel me? Hell yeah. So what would you say is the most, the looking back at, at your career, looking back at everything that you've accomplished, what are the moments that, that you're the most proud of? Man. I mean, I could say it's... I could say it's this or that, or, oh, I bought this, or I got that, or I went here, I went, I don't know, but I think the most proudest is being able to tap into my third eye. 
being able to connect spiritually with God. That's what I'm proud of the most. Is being is being uh, connected with the big homie. Yes, sir. That's my proudest moment. Is saying fuck. I I understand now. Like I understand. Maybe I don't understand everything, but I understand my position. And I think I have a, a a civic duty to 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 only give back what was what was loaned to me. God didn't give me nothing. He let me use it to to do His work. Wow. I think. So I think that's been, you know, and I could tell you all oh, my kids are, you know, living here or driving this or, dri- you know, going to see that or this and that. But I think it's really being here today and, and saying that everything that I went through and all the things that we experienced led to to these days. You know what I'm saying? To, to decipher that life is about nurturing and loving and empowering and pushing and i know motherfuckers are looking at like nah this was full of shit you know what this there's always gonna be those shit. people you know what i'm it's saying like, ah, fuck that you know and i respect it i understand it i ain't gonna try and change your mind you feel me god didn't sit there and keep trying and trying and trying when you didn't accept his word he moved on because he knew he was only gonna make you more mad by trying to instill that. It had to be you to come to the water. You know what I'm saying? It had to be you. Not God, hey, son, 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 son. That's why you can't change the rich. You know what I'm saying? That's why the good word says, hey, I don't want the richer, because they already feel set. They already feel like they don't need nothing else true you feel me that's true. it i got it it's a great point you know but that's not it i feel like at the end of the day what do you what do you leave with you don't leave with nothing it's the legacy that you left the impact that you had on your own kids you know what i mean like what you did with your with your with your word with your with your name you know and i'm not proud of the things that you know we got into and some people are like oh she remember this and Oh, I remember that. And sometimes I get a little embarrassed. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, damn. But that's just the evolution. You know what I mean? I couldn't sit here today without having to go through all that, you know, all that embarrassing stuff. Good point. Good point, homie. You have to go through your scrapes and bruises and get them bumps and and be able to overcome them to appreciate it. Yeah. The moments that you don't have it, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So. You spend time, homie. I'm not here talking shit about nobody. I don't know. This is what people locked on for. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, dog. <laughs> My bad. I know y'all probably got out here and was like, "Oh, it's on." <clears throat> Sorry to disappoint y'all, man. I'm talking about different things these days. So. That's beautiful, Spank. Yeah. And my hats off to you, homie. Literally, because Thank you. I seen it in you since we first linked up, like like on a different level. I remember. You know, we all we all come from our own camps, and we all have our own chips on our shoulders, right? Yes. So the moment that I got that call, and you're like, "Hey, Karna, I made you a painting, and I wanted to present it to you." Hey. Man, that shit was humbling as fuck to me, dog. Wow. And, and it made me realize that I could put down that chip. The hey. homies putting down that chip on their shoulders, like mm. we never had nothing bad or nothing, but it's just like another man embracing another man and say, "Hey, homie, here's your props." This is what you yeah. do, the homie. That was one of the most humbling moments up to that point in my life, dog. I had a good time doing that painting. I had a great time thinking about you, your success. Um, I felt great sitting there and, you know, putting something together and and like gifting you something that was from the heart. That was dope. I think that was, and that was um, coincidentally, those were like some of my early, like some of my early paintings. I wasn't like heavy into the arts like I am now, you know. God bless, I've had some pieces put in a museum and I got a lot more collectors now. And wow. Now it's like um, I get really inspired when I paint, you know. Maybe back then I was trying to decipher it. I was like, oh shit, you know, trying to figure it out, having fun with it. But I know it was important for me to, to come in and um, also tip my hat and and you know bring something that i think was was very important that was dope i think so there it is right there homie 
right there hanging in my in my in my showroom. I call this right here. So I'm proud of it, homie. You know what I'm saying? I walked by it. I didn't even notice. And when I went to the restaurant, I go, I wonder if the homie has that painting in his house, in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where that thing is at, you know? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Shout out to, to all the artists that I mess with. Uh, Shireen, uh, the homie Chewy Sanchez, a lot of different artists. And we do have different paintings up in different spots. I have uh, Chewy Sanchez's art still up in Marina Del Rey at the crib. We uh, got uh, the Lakers one that, that the homegirl Shireen did. Uh, uh, it's actually right now in my crib. Beautiful. And, uh, that's Spanky another. Locals right here, wow. YG. And every single time I'm interviewing anybody, it's right behind them. Homie. So it's inspirational, homie. What a I, blessing. And I appreciate you doing that for me. Thank you. That's just dope, you. homie. I definitely get people always asking about it. That's one wow. of my mom's favorite pieces. No way. My mom actually asked if she could have it. No way. <laughs> I'm like, nah, that's in my, that's in my <laughs> showroom. <You're tripping. laughs> so yeah, homie, you got, you got a sick that. talent. You got a sick talent, homie. Wow, and thank that, you. And homie. that is one of the most original pieces I've ever received the way that you put it together and the way that it came together, homie. So I gotta look at it again. I'll trip out on it for sure. It's amazing. Um, you know what's interesting? What motivated me to do these paintings like that and yeah. really to get on that? It's um, Nipsey Hussle got killed, and I wasn't like a huge Nipsey fan. I'm sorry. I wish I, I you know, had more knowledge of a lot more of his songs and things. I mean, you know, I've heard, of course, I've heard a lot of them and whatnot wasn't a like a super huge fan but the but the incident really intrigued me homie the incident really like it really touched me you know because these are people that are supposed to love you my boy these are people that are supposed to take care of you these are people that are supposed to have your back these are people that are supposed to you know uh, take their shirt off for you uh break bread with you check on you and what happens murder you so that 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 really like that really did something to me in my subconscious i was really like wow what a fucking trip and i really had the need to to do a nipsey painting because i was so like mentally i was so absorbed into that situation like i didn't go and like go visit his memorial i didn't do like much of that but i did grab an easel and i grabbed a painting and i went and i remember that i saw the paper and the paper was the headline of his murder and you know his own homeboy and all these interesting things and and i thought man this is wild i i, I need to paint this i need to paint this and i think that's what you know started this this art painting thing for me the death, the death of Nipsey, which is incredible. It's like weird, but it really did something to me. It really motivated me. And from there, that's how I created this one and many others in that style. So I got one in my house that's not, um, I've offered it to the family and you know, no, re no response and whatever. But I mean, the painting is there, it's in my son's room. It's a lot of people always ask me, is it for sales? I said, no, it's, I didn't, I didn't, I, I sold prints, but I didn't feel right, I don't know, making money off of it. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like, uh, like it was important for me to, 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 to gain, uh, you know, income from it. So the painting is there in my house. Oh yeah. I remember we're at the uh, penthouse right on Abbey Kenny in Venice. Yeah. And you pulled up and I remember you, you bringing that up. And it stood out to me because I remember Man. that very clearly. You were like, hey, homie, what they did to Nipsey inspired this. And uh, ah. to the people that, that that I feel like are important to our culture, you're one of them. And I want to gift this to you. And I remember hey. that was a very, very special moment to me, homie. Because wow. coming from our culture where everybody tries to put each other down mm. and, and throw each other under the bus, cut corners and all that. You have a real ass man, a solid ass mm. dude that took his time out of his life with his family. And presented that to me, homie. That was one of, like I said, the most humbling moment that I've ever had from appearing in the Chicano rap game, homie. So God I want to thank you for that, homie. No, well, talk. Well, thank you. Thank you, too, for, Hell yeah. for the great work and also being an inspiration. I mean, shit, you was at it when we was thinking about doing it. You know what I'm saying? So if I got legendary status, you definitely got, you been at that. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it was, it was much needed and very important. And especially, you know, we was... Like you said, we was in the same highway, not on the same lane. Yeah. 
And sometimes when you rolling fast and smashing and doing all of that, it's like you ain't shit. You trying to get through and smash, and you don't care about the cars next to you. Straight and up. it's like slowing down and being courteous to the cars next to you and being mindful of who's there and being respectful and all of that is very important to me. So it's been gradual. Okay. I think these are the days that, you know, it was important for us to start this new, I think this new trend of trying to be good people. Straight up. I ain't been the, be the best at it, but I'm doing, I'm trying to do my part. You feel me? Hell yeah. Most definitely. It's, it's very inspirational, homie, because moments like that help me be able to put my guard down and say, you know what? It's okay to give the next man props. It's okay. It made it easier hey. for me to do shit like this. You know what I mean? Hey. And those are moments and little seeds that are planted in my life to say, hey, homie, if a real one like Spanky Local could come and tip hat to me, then why can't I do it to the next man that deserves it to yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, homie. Mm. Real talk. Real Thank talk. you, homie. It's good to know that. I appreciate you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. So so what? I got more. I got, I'm sorry to interrupt. I got more art for you. I did tell you I had more art for you, and I wanted to connect with you to to bring you more art. I didn't bring it today, though. Okay. So it's just a reason to come and see you again. Hell yeah. You That's know? dope. Right? And I'll definitely take that. Huh? Okay. The door's open 24-7, 365 for you. Huh? I got a gang of more art that I've done since. Hell yeah. So I got a couple things for you, for sure. That's good to hear, Holmes. And, I, and I'm proud of you, dog. And, and speaking Likewise. of that, with the, with, the, with the art turning into merchandise, I mean, you had... Dope ass backpacks. Mm. I have to say, one of the dopest backpacks I ever seen in the game from our culture mm. was by Spanky Local. Come on. Uh, you had a, what was it like a, what do you, I don't want to say the word, like an apron, like a tattoo apron, or what was it yeah. like, like that? Yeah. All, all Gita. I mean, you've done some dope shit merchandise wise. So your art blends into merchandise, your art blends into the way you advertise yourself. You're mm. just an artist all the way around. Thank you. If you could, uh, Rewind a little bit and we could speak on it just just to honor the homie. You know, rest in peace, Stomps. I think about him a lot. You know what I'm saying? And he was a good friend of mine. And a lot uh -huh. of people don't know that I opened the door for him to be on high power. Mm. That was that was a moment that me and him connected on the a Portland trip that he he had came around with the homie, uh Capone's homie from his neighborhood, right. Grumpy. And me and Stomps clicked. He was uh -huh. a good dude, real, real dude. Spoke his mind. He didn't give a fuck at any right, time. Right, right. He didn't give a fuck if he offended you or, the, right. or your homeboys or anything. He was going to say exactly how he felt. And right. when he made his connection with you, it was a dope thing to see. You guys made you guys' album, Everybody Killer, the whole nine. Wow. Speak on your connection with Stomper and how that all started. So, Stomper actually, when he got to the studio, is because another homie at the studio connected with Stomper. Okay. Stomper, when he came by, I think I wasn't there the first time, but there was a, a picture or something that was there. And I remember staring at it and I was like, man, what's this? Right? And the homie was like, oh, I invited to. And in my mind, I was like, I was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, like, what's going on here? You know, like, what is this? You know, but in my screwed up mind, it was like, um, like, what do they want? What are we doing? What's the motivation? For sure. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like, yes, yeah, beautiful, calm, amazing. So it wasn't that great in the beginning. Okay. The homie, the next time the homie came, it was like the homie faded away. Yeah. And now Stomper and myself had connected. So it was like, I don't know, it was different. When, when I got to meet him, everything went out the window. Everything went out the window. Because in his, his story too, he was like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if the rest of my crew is going to agree with me being here. For sure. But I'm here. And they got pushed back from our side, too, at you first. Know? I remember that. It was like, I don't know. I don't know. And, I'm, you know, I fuck with you guys. And I'm st I still want to be. And so I was just, like, thrown off by the whole thing. But when we met, we completely hit it off. And the other homie kind of faded back. And their, and their friendship didn't really develop like Stompers and mine did. 
once we connected, I mean, I'd go to his house for family gatherings. I knew his mom. I knew his kids, Ralphie, oh, yeah. the baby. We'd sit there and have lunch together. We'd do a little music, a little fraud on the side. We'd get into trouble. we make cash. we do this. we move move it. That was what we were doing Straight in up. all reality. You know what I'm saying? And so he knew my struggles. I knew his struggles. Um, man, I love that guy. Hell yeah. I fucking love that guy. I love that guy, homie. He was really a good ass homie. Genuine as fuck. A good ass homie. And he always um he always projected great things for us. He always um had a great heart. If he loved you and he was good with you and, and you knew that, you know, y'all had it a good thing, he he would take his shirt Put it and on give the line. it to you. Straight he would up. he would whatever he needed, he would do. And 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 I in exchange would do the same. Hey homie, uh let's shop the album around. No, well, we're not getting that feria, we're getting this feria. We're getting this feria. That's what you're gonna ask for. Or hey, um, I'm having trouble with it. Well, here, let me help you. And like that. Then it became camaraderie and love. And you know, we'd hang out and you know, his you know, his daughter had a birthday, we'd come and bring food or you know, his baby boys will have a birthday. We come and I bring my kids, you know, to the jumper. That's the kind of relationship we developed. Then we went to, you know, well, let's go do a show in New York or let's go. I remember we went to Washington, D.C. Hell yeah. Took them out to, to, to the DMV. Took them out there to, to, to do an event and wherever there was action, if they wanted us there, come on, homie, let's go. And such a beautiful mind and a beautiful soul and great person and super amazing being homie hell yeah super amazing i miss the homie man most definitely hell yeah most I still, definitely i still remember a lot of things he told me a lot of arguments we had because he was passionate you bump heads sometimes yeah but yeah it was always with love yeah. you know both ways yeah yeah yeah, yeah. hell for yeah sure. For sure, man. How was the the, uh, the the recording of that album? How long did it take you guys to make it? Because he was qu quick as fuck in the studio. Man, so you know what? I feel like I feel like we had a lot going on, and it was hard for us to really close that project right away. I had to encourage, like, okay, hey, oh, I'm gonna take the equipment. And we're gonna do it here, or I'm gonna get a room over here at this motel. Let's finish it up over here. Like I had to encourage the project, but when it came to finally sitting down and and taking care of business, it was like bam, bam, bam. And such a talent, homie, such a fucking talent. It's like everything he, you know, put together and spit. He just seemed like a, a natural, it was super homie. natural to him, and natural. Hell so yeah. it, it was a little. I t the next time I go, fuck, homie, we're g you got to make this easier for me. The next time around, you know, we do uh, EBK too. Yeah. You know, uh, I stayed in a loft in downtown in downtown LA, right there, uh, uh, Washington, Washington boys lived in that, in, that, in that area, in that building. And I remember, um, I remember staying there for a little bit and had a little loft there, and I go, come on, let's go to the rooftop. We'd always go to the rooftop and smoke a little, hang out and go up there and shoot the shit and talk about life. Uh, I can't recall who's up there with us, and that's how we got some of the images for the for the project for that's the album, dope. right there in our loft in, uh, in downtown. So, a lot of great memories with the brother. Hell yeah. yeah, good people, man. Super good people. Man, rest in peace to my boy Lonnie Mendoza, aka Stomper. Wow, still still riding with us. I still the got legend. one of the main main pictures in my studio right now. I'm gonna blow it up. It's me and Stomps rocking the show, and uh, yeah, got hell the EBK. yeah, hell Feel yeah, me? for life. EBK, hell yeah, for no particular reason. And Just if because he, we love the homie, you straight know? up. And yeah. if he loved you, he loved you for real. Yeah, like, he would do anything for you, homie. And He'd be I, like, "Hey, don't be mad at me. Yeah, for don't sure. be mad at me, fool. Yo. Don't be mad at me." He'd be thinking I'd be mad at him sometimes too. Yeah. And we would, you know, we you know, we bump bump heads and things, but it was always love. I was for like, sure. "Nah, fool, it's not like that. Don't be thinking the worst." I'd always be, like, "Don't be thinking," but he, he's like, "You're a fucking asshole." <laughs> he always says shit like yeah. that. Ah, you're a fucking asshole, dick. Yeah, for sure, dick. <laughs> you're a fucking dick. You're yeah, a fucking asshole, dick. Yeah, yeah. Great memories with the homie on exactly. stage. Well, call me. Don't be, don't be an asshole. You know, be, you know. Sometimes I don't know what's going on with you. Like I'm like, nah, nah. Fools, we're good. You know, life. Don't trip. Don't, don't mind me. I'm an asshole. 
Hell yeah. And you know, I used to trip out. I used to hate sharing a room with that fool in the road. <laughs> that fool would never, I can't sleep with no lights on. And that fool, if you turn off the light, he would get ready to catch a fade with you, dog. Welcome, he was like, he'd right. be like, hey, homie, leave the TV on. I'm like, leave what? the TV on. I turn the TV off. <laughs> Fucking crap, turn that shit back on, homie. I'm not playing with you. Oh the fuck I'd be like, I think this was playing with me, but he wasn't playing, dog. Wow. And he would he would sleep sitting up with his eyes open. I'd be like, hey, stop. <laughs> hey, stop. He'd be like, yeah. eyes still open. Why are you waking me up, fool? I'd be like, cool, your eyes were open, bag. homie. He was a trip, wow. dog. He was a, he was a unique character, dog. And I, and I missed the homie for sure, man. Yeah, we we be in um, I'm telling you, we was out there at the White House and saw some of the monuments, and he'd be like, look, fool. You see those uh, hieroglyphics on that building? Yeah, that's Illuminati shit. This means this, and that means that, and this is this, and that. And, I, and I'd be like, this was full of shit? Let me, <laughs> and I'd be like, this was talking out his And I'd go, and I'd look up, It'd be all and real. I'd be like, oh, shit. He knew some and I'd shit. I'd be like, what? Straight up. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable as The hell. guy read. Hell yeah. He read. And he yeah. was also an artist because he loved hitting up. That he fool did. loved hitting up. He used to he be did. part of OFA. Oh, yeah. That was originally his crew. So oh, yeah. before he got into his hood, he, he was, was a OFA. Savage. So he, that motherfucker used to hit up everywhere. I remember taking him to New Jersey once. Twice, maybe. This motherfucker out there on the turnpike. Blasting off everything out Hell there. yeah. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm ready to go to jail in New <laughs> Jersey. You know? Straight oh, up. come on, Spank. Like, shh. He was serious shh, about it. Shh. I'm just like, man, this guy's for real. For real. For real. For real. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. He was Good out memories. there doing the dirt. Hell yeah. Yeah. I love recording with him, man. Seeing the way that he would come in the studio with his books and he would have a gang of raps written and then he would like wow. tear some shit out, rewrite it <clears> right <throat> on the spot. It was just Dang. it was just a dope moment to to witness. And, and out of all the people I recorded back in the day, I would say uh he was one of my favorite to work with for sure. That's straight up. I mean, he was dope yeah. as fuck. And I always, always loved bumping the shit. He would leave the studio, I'd just be bumping it, bumping it. And then I didn't realize how the world was gonna intercept it. And mm. when the world loved him, it was like everybody was, it was like Stomps Mania after he dropped his shit. Wow. And it made me feel special to be a part of that shit, producing wow. it, recording it. You know what Amazing. I mean? Amazing. Some of his first recordings and shit. But yeah, man, switching gears. Uh, What, what would you say is uh, 2024 Spanky Local? What you got coming? Man, so. Um... I think this last year has been like uh, recalibrating, re-energizing, um, absorbing our new area. Um, but I think the the important thing for me is just going back to my roots. Hell yeah. It's like leading by example by doing this art thing and doing music and doing what we love and maybe maybe switching the gears slightly and 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 you know, working on a little bit more positive messages in my music. I don't know if I feel like, you know, feeding people stories of distress and pain. And I don't know if that's in me right now to, to talk about things that, you know, that maybe we don't need to be absorbing like that. So right now it's a, a shift of creating music that's, I think, um, fun, but also empowering. And you don't feel like, we're on ignorance shit. For sure. You feel me? Like we got a little bit more value. We got more messages to give our kids. And not like uh I'm looking at it like, oh shit, my son's gonna hear this, so let me switch it. More like the world is gonna hear this. This is my legacy. What 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 am I trying to shift or what am I impacting with with what am I what I'm you know with the content I'm producing. To me, views are cool and Likes are cool and all of that stuff is important, but I think the the impact is more important, the long term impact, and that's really what I'm focused on right now. Hell yeah! So art for sure is is um, something that I've been way more involved in. Uh, working on my clothing again, so local brand, uh, doing the bags and you know doing uh, doing merch and going out and doing these events and things, tattoo events and correlating with. Uh, relevant and prevalent brands that understand the need to, to support and stimulate brown brand uh, entrepreneurship you feel me and there's not a lot that you can cor correlate with but when you do find those collaborators I think that's important for me right now is collaborating with people that understand my mission and my 
vision. That's Same my vision. Type shit. Yeah, it's my frequency. It's not everyone's. I don't expect everyone to be like, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'm doing it. If you, if it's for you, if it's been calling you, by all means. If I could do it, I, I'm pretty sure you can push yourself in a better direction. Sure. So I feel like that's that's uh that's my goal for the for the new year. Hell yeah! New music, new art, going hard like you. That's it. Hell yeah! Work ethic like you. I can't slow down when I got a comrade in the game that's showing up and showing out you know putting in that good work good shit leading by example you feel me you motivate me when i see man new content man boy this boy at it that's super motive motivating for me too that's dope you know what i'm saying like we, we got this we, we have a, a responsibility to 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 take care of hell yeah yeah that good work that's dope homie you know it's crazy you say that because sometimes the most least expected people will tap in and tell me that the other mm. day lazy bone from both of harmony told me bro you've been motivating me to get go harder i'm like what the fuck? lazy wow. bone <laughs> lazy bone come on are you playing wow. with me so that that type of shit lets me know that i'm on the right mission you know what i'm saying great uh we definitely we definitely all influence each other and i think that it's important to to represent this shit right so the next generation could look at us and say hey we should go down that path instead of destructive path you know what i'm saying because there is ways to take care of your family there is ways to get up out the hood and make your struggle a victory and a lot of people don't pre preach that these days it's getting way worse with the music and watered down as mm. far as uh the negativity i i definitely see it so there's very few people that are out here pu pushing this positive energy mm. and brown excellence I, I would like to call it yes so i'm proud of us homie for doing that and brown excellence. Like, straight up it's important homie if we don't do it who's gonna do it straight up nobody's gonna do it hell yeah it's our job, I think. My 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 per perception, absolutely. Mine, I'm not forcing no one to. So if you believe in that, pick up some art, pick up some spanky loco art. It's it's love driven, it's empowering. You know, I'm sitting there every stroke. I'm putting my soul into this. Oh yeah, you feel me? And where could they pick it up? Man, you go to spankyloco.net. Hell yeah. Solocobrand.com. All right then. Hell yeah. Pick up Smarte. Um, I only got prints on there. Originals, I don't have too many of, but if you send me a message, I might have some original pieces available. Not very many out there, but the few that I have in the collection might be available to special collectors. But I always got prints and always got a lot of beautiful things. It's beautiful, bro. I yes, love sir. seeing the growth, homie. When I sit here and I speak to you, I see a man on a mission. I see a man that will not falter for what he believes in. Mm. I see a man that's uh, come from what we all at one point doubted ourselves and thought yes. we couldn't make it out of. Mm. And, and, and I congratulate you for believing in yourself and becoming Spanky Local who you are today. Man. Because, because it could have went any other direction. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, life is not friendly to people that come from our backgrounds and our genre nah. and what we came from Af right. absolutely absolutely i know you got a lot of homies that, that suffered i got a lot of homies that suffered so we represent a lot of people and we have the responsibility to ca carry a lot on our shoulders whether we like it or not so True. the fact that you're doing it with class with respect with honor with integrity with good morals with god behind you i salute you homie because you. we all could have got lost in so many ways this rap game could pollute your mind in so many different ways homie. from the drug eyes to the to the negativity to the prison to you know what it is g there's, it's a, devil. there's so many ways homie absolutely devil. absolutely it's so i devil. congratulate you homie and, and circling back to the beginning when i gave you your flowers hey. i meant that shit wholeheartedly because God bless. us as, as 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 homies in the game we come from a genre where everybody tries to tear each other down there's channels out there that are making a, a living right now just off of bad mouthing everybody so we need to break that mold and we need to break that that cycle and say it's okay to put put our guard down and give each other props you know what i'm saying so i give you props for for, for doing that homie yeah, if you, you had a chance to look back of who you are now mm. and talk to the young spanky local that was lost in the streets the one that was stuck in, in everything that you are changing now to become a better person mm. What would you what would you tell the young spanky local that was stuck in the struggle? I would have gave him a hug. 
I would have loved him. I would have told him, come here, I got you. I love you. I know you need this. Come. I'm here for you. Hell yeah. Those are the things that I seldom, seldomly would hear. Hardly. So I feel like having someone that believed in a dream and believed in, in me, whether I was doing good or bad, it was, I think, very important. You know, so I think first and foremost, I would have given myself a hug. As, as lame as it sounds or as cliche or soft or whatever the fuck it sounds like, I feel like that's what, that's what, that's what I would have needed. Hell yeah. Like, kid, come here, homie. I got you. Come here. Let me, come here. Come here. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Only I know the struggle. God knows the struggle. My family knows the struggle. But I feel like that, you know, come here. It's okay. We're, we're going to work this out together. You know? It's like generational trauma. You know what I mean? Come from immigrant, you know, parents from Mexico. Hardworking parents that you don't understand why they're gone all day. You don't understand why you're raising yourself. You don't understand they're doing better f- for you and you're not recognizing that and you're, you know, feel like you're not whole. You feel like you're navigating on your own. You feel like no one understands you. The administrators don't love you. The school don't care about you. So I think I would have filled my cup with something beautiful and positive. Be like, don't worry, Carnalito. We got this. Hell I yeah. promise you, we got this. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad to see you growing. I'm glad to see everything you've been through. I'm going to give you a little insight when I used to be on your side of the track. So I had a homeboy that was a real, real good friend of mine. My homeboy, Clumsy. My homie, Jimmy. And he was from Helm Street. Oh, so wow. back in the days, I used to be over wow. there kicking in this shit. No way. Very small street in front of no the bakery. Way. Little uh, cul-de-sac. Nah. And once in a while, we get caught slipping by your homeboys, wow. and they be banging, turned up. And they be like, hey, fool, you from bakery, boys? I'm like, what? Oh. What you talking about, dog? And then, then the homies would tell me, that's how they diss our hood out here and shit. No way. Right? So I remember that, dog, and I remember uh That's seeing, really, like, really, really close. Absolutely. It's that's, right there, dog. You guys were surrounded, the homies. That was... Just an alley of waste, man. Up. That is crazy. So I'm surprised we we might have ran into each other back then. You might have been in one of those cars that wow. were pulling out straps on us. You shit. know what's interesting? We'd always get into some kind of altercation with 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 the homies. There. Yeah, for sure, for sure, always. For sure. Yeah, and that's uh, crazy, homie. It's crazy. It's a small that. world. Yeah, my homeboy was a. It's kind of a stocky bottle, mm. light skin with green eyes. His name was Clumsy. Mm. He was always right there. All his primos were right there and everything. So how's he doing? He's doing uh not too good, homie. He ended up killing two people. And wow. uh yeah, he's he's gone. He's it is what it is, you know. But how long ago was this? Uh shit. I would say like two thousand two. Wow. He the homie got caught up in the in, in drugs and fucking around too much. And mm. uh one day they they woke him up. He was sleeping in an alley. And they woke him up uh, busting his windows out, the mm. bottles that he owed money to. And uh, my homie was a real one, dog. He, he put in work and did what he had to do and took them fools out. He's like, you ain't going to do that to me today. Wow. But uh, now, unfortunately, he's gone. You know what I mean? And it is what it is. But yeah, man, it is what it is. I still, uh, you know, once in a while hear from his primos and shit like that. It's far and few in between, but it's always love for the homie regardless. You know what I'm saying? And wow. I still cherish those moments and those memories because when I would be over there was when I'd be on the run, uh, running for wow. my PO and it wasn't safe to be where I was at. Who doesn't know where I was at? So I was like, hey, fool, let me go let me, let go, me pull go up post on, Venice, yeah. on Venice Boulevard. Pull, pull up with the homies right here, my primos, and they always let me crash on the couch the whole night. But, wow. you know, going out and trying to just like live, like, fuck, man, I get tired of being in the house, yeah. running into your homeboys, ready to burn it up, ready to smoke yeah. a motherfucker, you know? Nah, the and the only was... thing that would save me was I wasn't from there. They'd be like, bang on me. I'm like, I'm from Silver. Ooh. Like, oh, all right, homie, that's right. Fuck bakery okay. boys. I'm like, okay, shit. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, goddamn. Yeah. It was real back then, homie. Amazing. So, yeah, hell yeah. I remember uh, a lot of the hood had a speed bumps, right? Yeah. Speed bumps and shit. Yeah, I remember yeah. all that shit yeah. back in the days, man. It did. 1990s, homie. Mid-90s, 96, wow. 97, 98. That's when it all went down. That's when it was, homie. That's when things always... Straight up. When things percolated and my Absolutely. life changed. Absolutely. My life changed drastically in hell that yeah. area, so... Hell yeah. Yeah, my mom had bought a house uh, right down the way. They migrated from Venice. Um, when they came from, from, from Jalisco, from Guadalajara, they... My dad migrated to Venice, and my mom migrated to Venice, and then gradually they made it east a little bit. So we ended up on uh, Venice, La Cienega, Shenandoah area. And 
Hell that's yeah. Right, that's right there. That's That was the, the stomping grounds and Straight things. up. And that's why I appreciate my life and the opportunities I had because, unfortunately, all my best friends, all my good friends, they all had that fate. They either, mm. they either went out like that and they're doing life, life sentences or they're no longer with us. You know what wow. I'm saying? So, you know, I got a little uh, lump wow. in my throat just speaking of it. You Amazing. know what I'm saying? Because uh, I know what I'm here for. And I know that those moments aren't. I know God chose me to to go past that for a reason. I'm not going to ever waste that opportunity. You know that what I'm saying? Swimming. And every single time I lay down at night and I pray, I thank God for the opportunity and how I can make it better every single it's day. So, I'm because proud of you. It, there's a lot more to life than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of you. Hell yeah. Likewise, homie, I'm proud of you, right. Karna. And I'm glad that we didn't uh, uh, run into each other back then on no bad shit. You know what I'm saying? It was always all love. It was easy for that to happen. Yeah. God bless it didn't happen. Hell yeah. Then we could sit here today and, you know, straight up have these beautiful conversations. Absolutely, homie. Absolutely. Amazing conversations. Hell yeah, homie. So, Come shit, on. before we get up out of here, you down to take a few calls? Man, let's we got, go. We got the phone line, homie. Taking, let's, let's talk you about taking it. taking calls and all of that. Hell yeah, we got to, homie. That's There's people out there that want to talk to Spanky Local right yeah. now. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's nah, 1140 at night. To you, and we still got 235 people. We almost at 2,200 views. And they okay. want to. Call in 840-215-2192. Let me go ahead and take that, this off airplane mode. Is that pretty good for a, for a last minute uh, Hell imp, yeah. impro, improv dude? We're doing um, amazing. Yeah? Okay. We're doing amazing. God is good, bro. Man, so beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the... Um, we have that impact. Bluetooth. Absolutely, we have that bro. Impact, man. Absolutely, God is good. Let's go. And just being authentic with ourselves and not on no bullshit. That's what makes Let's me the on. most proud. You know what I'm saying? No, we got some... We got some... Uh, man, we've touched a lot of subjects. The... When we ain't touched is this record of ours. Okay, let's talk about it. Right? Talk about it. Let's manifest this I feel, like, this I feel like I I got people that ask me, oh, what? But when y'all gonna do that record? When y'all gonna do that record, you know? Hell yeah. So I don't know, man. Man, it's it's, it's in the it's in the uh, studio right now, I should say. Yeah? Because the homie, hell yeah, the homie got nothing but West Coast bangers right here, my homie critical. Uh. So there's definitely... Uh, one ready okay. to go. I could say at any time, homie. Okay. And we're okay. right here. This is what we do 24 7, 365. So if you're ready to hit the mic, that's what Man. we do. You and know I'm, what I'm saying? I might have to, before I dip out, I'm going to think I might have to come and uh, get a little session in. Hell yeah, for right? sure. When do you dip out? Um, I'm probably going like next week. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm what you doing at, Saturday night? Saturday night? Hmm. Let me know. We we pulling up to uh, Don Quixote in East Los. We we're okay. about to do that that show with the uh, Conejo. I'm co-headlining uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. They call that it that Saturday. That Saturday. Okay. Okay. So you're more than welcome to pull up. You know you Shit. got VIP blue carpet roll out wow. all day. All right. I might have to come and support. Most definitely, Let I gotta know. come support my boy. Let me know, dog. We and right there. And that's this Saturday. It's Saturday. Okay. The, the night before Christmas Eve. All right, definitely. The nightmare before Christmas. Hey. <laughs> you know, Conejo had to bring that sickness to it. Come on, man. And I was honored. And that was a big moment because we used to beef crazy, obviously. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. For him to, yeah, say, yeah, hey, yeah, for him yeah, to yeah. say, hey, homie, man, I want that's wanna... legendary stuff, man. man. When I got the car, I didn't even believe it. I was legendary like, come on, someone's fucking with me. They are like, Conejo wants you to call headline the show. I'm like, yeah, right, homie. Wow. Stop playing with me. It was real, homie. So and these I'm going to do things that These are the things that, that change the culture. Straight up. These are the, the things that... Um, to make it all right. Everybody's watching, homie. We got to lead by example. Right. Absolutely. Come on now. Hell yeah. Shout out to everybody out there. 840-215-2192. Call in and talk to Spanky Local. Show some love. You already know how we get down. I got this right now. Here we go. Off top. We got Sunnyside Washington in the house. Say what's cracking the Spanky Local. What's cracking? What's cracking? I'll see what's up to Spanky Local. ¿Qué onda, carnal? Sunnyside. Hey, kicking it, man. Kicking it. That's right. Hey, Flo, you want to say what's up, Flo? Because I've seen uh, Spanky Loco around uh, the car shows over there up in uh, Seattle. Yeah, we be in the streets. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We go yeah, yeah. You, got your, you, you be chilling with your kids, though. You know what I mean? So, of course. I'll so, I ain't, with trying to, I ain't trying to be like, what's up? You know, trying to be a little oh, groupie no, 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 or anything. No, no, you know what I no, mean? No, 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 no. You pull, you pull. Nah, you I got to show you respect. You know what I mean? Nah, 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 nah. You got to pull up and say, you going. You, you know, we chop it. No, up yeah, and, uh, a couple of times I said, "What's up?" And like, "What's up, Spanks?" You know the pele. You know the pele. That's about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, nah, for sure, man. I love to connect. Man. Nah, yeah. So the next time you gotta pull me over when we out at these, uh, at these, uh, at these car hops and things, right? With the homies. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yep. 
Yep, we were right there hopping the low load shit. Yeah, so I said, come on and say, what's up, you know what I mean? Come on, yeah, yeah, badass man. shit, dog. I'll be seeing you around, my boy. All right, Carnal. Hey, yo, uh, criminal, I had a quick question, my boy. What's cracking? Uh, I seen on the last uh, live you had, uh, you were mentioning when you were kicking with the tiny winos, and you said you, you were kicking with the IE homies. The tiny winos is my click, homie. What's cracking, though? Yeah, that's right. But remember, you were saying that it, uh, in IE that uh, your homie, rest in peace, Ruben? Yes, sir. Yeah, hey, I want to know if we're talking about the same Ruben now. Is that the homie Slugger? No, my my boy Ruben was called Longface. We call him Vulture. Ruben Zamora was his last name. All uh, right, because that's some homie still right there from the Tiny Winos in the IE, and his name was Ruben, but it was Slugger. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, that's so what's I was up. like, I wonder if it's the same vato or what. You know what I mean? Nah, nah. Much love to your homeboy nah, Slugger. Nah, that's all good. Eh? Nah, it's yeah. Simon, Simon. All right, my boy Day. Well, salute my boy Day. I thought was right. Hey, much love and respect. I mean, gracias for calling. All right, al rato. Later. Oceanside Khalifa showing live with Spanky Loco was popping. Woo, that's right. Oh, 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 side. Oh, side. What's cracking? Oh, side. What's good with Spanky it? Loco, man. It's good. It's good to be on live right now. Spanky just calling. Give my respects to Spank. So, remember that, that, that glass that was my G. Get it up. Hey, your shit's man, cutting love, out a little. We love your energy. Hell yeah. We love your energy, but we don't love your yeah. service. <laughs> <laughs> we love your energy. Shout out but to Cricket Mobile. But we don't fuck with we don't fuck with your oh, service. That's up, homie. <laughs> <laughs> stand in the stand in the corner of the room so we can hear you. Stand in that right, one I'm, in that one corner that you stand at when you when you talk to baby. That one corner. When you talk to you baby, can... yeah, so we can hear you right. Yeah, All right, that's that's there you go. There you go. Much love, both sides. Much love. All day. No, much. Albuquerque, New Mexico, on live with uh, Spanky Loco. What's cracking? <laughs> Burke. Hey, this is one of the best shows I've ever seen. Damn, everybody's calling from cricket tonight, huh? <laughs> Man. What's Let going on? Hey, we appreciate Did you. Did she say one of the best shows? She said hey, this is one of the man. best shows she's seen so far. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, there you go. There you go. Amazing. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, shit, it's blocking on me. Ah, uh, fuck, I can't. Hey, we we hear you. We hear you knocking. Come on in. Shit, I'll get back to her. 626, you're on live with Spanky Loco, Mr. Criminal. What's popping? Hey, what's up? What's up? I'm starting to think it's my shit. <laughs> you were... <laughs> Yo, what's up, what's up? Yo, new school stuff. We never had no shit like this. Man, this phones is so blowing up so much that, that the calls Damn. can't even they can't even squeeze through. I got in. Hell yeah. And I got in? Hell yeah. 818, you're on live with Spanky Loco. What's crack? Hey, what's up, Mr. Criminal Spanky Loco? This is Miguelito Tattoos on Instagram. Hell hey, yeah, Miguelito tattoos. Blast me up. Tap me up. Hey, see, Dios quiere, homie? Yeah. You already know? All right. I got some room on my legs, man. I'm I'm trying to be fully covered. Let's get it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I have two questions for you. Let's get it short. What's that? I said, um, I have two questions for you, Peque Loco. A ver. Okay, my first question is, for 2024, what's one tattoo that you want to tattoo but haven't tattooed yet? One tattoo that I would like to tattoo that I haven't tattooed yet. Simone. Hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not like a uh, outside of the box type guy with the arte. Um, I just want to continue doing sleeves and backs and more of that. So it's not one particular thing. I think it's more of everything. So the more sleeves I could do, the more backs I could do, the more piernas I could do. Man, I'm a, I'm a happy camper, carnal. I'll probably be paying you to let me tattoo on you if I could. You feel me? It's a blessing. How about yourself? How about yourself? Well, we're asking me... Yeah, the question I'm, that I'm asking you. Yeah, exactly. For the new year, what you what you trying to tattoo? It? I think it would be a badass piece to do a 
Leonardo da Vinci, La Ultima Cena. Okay, okay. There you go. Flipping the script with it. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, like I said, I got a little skin right here. When you're ready, man, let's link up. Hey, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll get you on the DM on IG. Send me. Skater, we'll make it happen. Come on we'll now. We'll make it in your shop or we'll make it in East LA or... Eso. Wherever. Much all right, up. carnal. Gracias for calling in, homie. All up, criminal. Gracias. All day. Alhambra, California. You're on live with Spanky Local. What's cracking? What up, what up, what up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What do you think about the new stuff? Like, uh, sexy gum, for kind of, that kind of shit. The new what, homie? I'm sorry, I missed it. New music, new music. The new music? New like Chicano who? rap. Like who? Name a few. Lefty Gun play. Mm. Howdy rap. Okay, okay. Man, Chino, I mean. Chino Rana. Ooh, okay, okay. Man, I, I, sh enlighten me. I'd, I'd love to see more. I'd love to hear more. Tap me in with the homies. Send me a oh, message, some know. of the links. Oh, oh, at, never know what's up. At OG Spanky Local. Send me, send me the links so I can check the homies out. Most definitely. All right, all right, much better. Yeah, send me the links. I'd love to hear the new stuff, man. Hell yeah. I'm excited. Let's hear what the homies is doing. Most definitely. Gracias for calling right. in, homie. Much love. Thank you. And shout out to all the new homies doing it. Richmond, California, you're on live with Spanky Loco. What's cracking? What's up, criminal? Hey, I got a question for Spanky. Yes, What's sir. Good? So cool. Hey, what happened to that night? No. The what? Night out dog. The night out dog? <laughs> Man, Tony A stayed with it. He never gave it. He never gave it to me. He never gifted it to me. He should have gifted it to me. I would have put it somewhere. I would have let my morros play with it. Right? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, it's a blessing. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Gracias. Much love. Hell yeah. Sacramento, California. You're on live with Spanky Loco. What's up, y'all fools? You you have a spanky. How y'all doing? Man, we posted. The energy is beautiful. Hey, how is it feel being sober now? Man, I mean, what kind of sober are you talking about? Shit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tell Mr. Criminal, what's up? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I mean, I still smoke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. But it's positive mind. Hey, Mr. Criminal. Still elevate. Let's crack him. Hey, that's good, bro. Yeah, I still... I, I still praise God and I still praise Jah, so by all means. That's right. That's right, homie. I feel like uh, God's still gonna love me if I smoke a Straight smoke up. a number. Hell yeah. You feel me? So, um, I don't know. I don't know what the question is. He's gone. Oceanside, you're on. You're on live. What's popping? Damn criminal. Outside. I have Verizon, my boy. <laughs> What'd he say? I have Verizon. <laughs> you got Verizon, <laughs> homie? That's for so homie. What's yeah, popping? I found my corner. You found your corner. Oh, 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 no, there no. you go. Okay. There you go. Okay, What's up? Found my corner, gone. bang. Outside. Okay, okay. See, let's go. Yeah, no, man. I was just calling to say saludos to Spank. Hey, That's been a minute. Love. Remember we were posted up at Danny's function at the class. Oh man, my old side riders, man, they show up and show out. Oh, yeah. They pulled up to oh, the smoke yeah. shop. You pulled up to the smoke Especially shop, right? Respect. Man, you my y'all my dogs, man. Y'all my y'all my family, man. I love y'all. Yeah, bro. So what's Dad did throw another event? Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh man, Danny got Danny caught a little time, man, and, and left us for a little bit. And uh I'm glad that yeah, he's home he now. Been... Yeah, I'm glad he's home now and the homies yeah. back with his family and all that good stuff, and so hopefully we get some time to go check out Danny and go see uh go see the family out there and uh in old side. It's always a blessing to link up with my people out there. So thank you, homie. Likewise. Yeah, God Likewise. bless. Thank you, Carnal. Likewise. Yeah, so. That's right. Much love, Carnal. Much love, homie. <laughs> my bad. Two one three. You're on live with Spanky Local. What's cracking? Hey, what's up, criminal? What's popping? 
hey, I got this fucking memory. I met you in a freestyle explosion concert. Is that right? 2007, bro. Speak on Ooh. it. What happened? You remember going to that shit? I remember going to a lot of concerts. Homie, enlighten me. What, what was the memory? It, 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 it was a 2005, 2007 freestyle explosion concert. Okay. What happened? And you were smoking right behind me. Okay. And I look back and I'm like, oh shit, that's criminal. Hey, that's what's up, homie. He's like, let me smoke that shit. Yeah. With you. <laughs> nah, you're probably the only one smoking. Buff, buff, pass. You were probably the only one smoking weed in that shit. Hell hey. yeah. As usual. Like a rock star. But I've been listening to you since the get go, man. Much hey. love to you and thank you, local. Much, Much love and respect, homie. Gracias for calling in. Hopefully, we see you again in another one. <laughs> hey, but ask him for a hit next time. Yeah, fool. Don't be <laughs> scared. I'll pass. I'll pass for sure. I'll pass for sure. There you go. Fucked up the rotation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Much love and respect, homie. All right, honey, bud. All day. Lakeside, Arizona. You're on live with Spanky Local. What's cracking? What's up, Chris? What's, What's poppin'? up, Spanky? You won. What's happening? You won. You won. <laughs> huh? She was calling all the way from here. That's right. She had uh, hold on uh, the camps before, but... Uh, not hey, on the actual criminal. Hey, hey, put the phone like uh, an inch from your lips, cut it down. It sounds like you're eating the mic. Oh, um, shit. My bad, bro. Better? better? Way better, homie. Uh-huh. Hey. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Fucking, uh, thanks for, uh, being a big fan, Tom. Did I love hearing the, the thing about, uh, bumps and all that shit. I grew up on the South Korea. Yes, sir. And you know you're part of that shit, too. So, uh, shit, that shit such as down that hole. Fucking 32 years old, dog. Fucking been listening to that shit since I was a teenager. Wow. So, fucking all that shit hits home. Amazing. Hell yeah. We appreciate your support, homie. It's yeah. people like you that kept yeah. us going. Yes, sir. Well, Una, yeah. Un abrazo, carnal. All right, much love to you, brothers, man. Much love, carnalito. Right back at you, carnal. Un abrazo. Stay up. Much love. Always. Hell yeah. That's dope, homie. Feels it's good to get dog. this love from people? I mean, it's amazing, man. It's not stop, right? It's amazing. When you keep it real with your people, they, they Come always on. show in, show out, right? Yeah, they're like, um, you know, we don't we don't know how comfortable you are with, you know, the term Chicano rap and bo-. I'm like, shit, I'm Chicano. I rap. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is what it is. Straight up, right? I don't run from the <laughs> hell from yeah. the phrase. It's it's psh, on me. Swap meets, flea markets. That shit fed my kids. Straight homie. up. You know what I mean? And that's brown. That's brown excellence. Straight up. That's you know we've been doing that since the beginning of time. Hell yeah. Setting up shop at flea markets and going out there and setting up our stuff. So hell yeah, we proud of that. Hell we're yeah. proud of that. God bless. Hell yeah. Sailor Morgan, you're on live with Spanky Local. Say what's cracking. Criminal. This is your homie Adon. Hey. What? What's good? Hey, what's up? What's up, Mr. Chris? Hey, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't get to your... Hey, I'm... I know. Hey, I'm sorry I wasn't able to go to the Low Rider Car Show. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, too. We but I just want to congratulate you. I just want to congratulate you on the podcast, homie. Much love, hey, I mean, we appreciate it. You know, it. all the fucking success that you're doing, you know, for other years. Come on. The first album you came out, you know, I've been following since day one. I still keep it real, keep it south side. We don't fuck around, homie. So I just want to congratulate you for what you're doing for the for the culture, you know. Why well, we appreciate you, homie. Much love and respect. And for what that you're doing stuff. for, you know, this whole fucking nation. You know, we should be doing a I think you should go all worldwide, you know, fuck it. You know, just go worldwide. Go fuck all it. fucking all over the fucking map. Fuck it. You know, it's dope, Fuck the haters, you know what I'm saying, homie? Let me tell and you I, something. I just want to congratulate you uh, uh, on, on the album, uh, God Got Me. Thank you. Hey. Thank fucking you, homie. success, homie. Number one in the fucking billboards, homie. Number one, SN. Much Let's love and respect. Hell yeah. We appreciate that, homie. Gracias and, you know, the there's a couple albums I wasn't able to buy from you because they're probably gone forever, you know. Which but one's if I that? get it from you, sign from you, that will be great. What you album? You know, Criminal Mentality Part 3. Mm. Oh, that shit's still in rotation, homie. We I can't it. get that album anymore, but we anyway. Gotta, we got a signed copy for you, right? Yeah, we got you, homie. <laughs> Check Don't it next week in. for the next, po- next yeah, podcast. Yeah, man. I just, I've been trying to get all your CDs, hey. but there's a few albums I can't find no more. 
Man. Well, you know what? Tap into the website, crimefamilyentertainment.com, and you might just find it. I try, homie. It's not... It says it says sold out on there. Oh, so shit, I, was out there. Hey, I, just, I was just hey, on there two criminal. minutes ago. You know what? I'm what your up? biggest fan, yeah. homie. I appreciate you. Yes. I'm your biggest fan since day one. I've been wanting to meet you, uh, do a record together because I, I I make music too, homie. Salem, Oregon. That's dope. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to be in the fucking studio with you. Uh, and show you what I got, and, and, and let's get on the fucking you, homie. Hell yeah, we'll tap in with Critical, and we'll see what's cracking. Oh, he's, he's been tapping in, bro. I'm, I'm going to yeah. get your motivation. I'm going to change this whole fucking nation, the new Stop. generation of music, homie. Hell yeah, I Blessings. like that. I like that that belief in yourself, hey. homie. Get that shit. Let's go. I got you, homie. You and I, we're going to make music together. Watch and learn from Master, from me. You got to learn some steps and how, how we do this shit in the rap, in the Chicano rap mm-hmm. industry. You say you're going to learn today, we, we young grass We got to get together. We got to get together. Young grass smoker. <laughs> <laughs> young All right, master. Hey, you know like, take the pebble from hey, my hey, hand. Hey, you know, like, little, uh, hey, I'm going to tell you one thing, homie. Like King Little G said about Little Rob. He didn't want to He didn't want to do, uh, do it for the culture. But I'm going to take this uh, position. I'm going to I'm gonna take the step to, 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 to change this fucking thing about haters, about hating each other and shit. That shit got to stop, homie. All right, homie. Well, we appreciate you you tapping in, homie. Much love, hey, and respect. Much love, Mr. Criminal. Much love. All Stop day. The baby. God love bless. Dollars. That's what's up, homie. All day. Wow. Seattle, Washington. You're all <laughs> yeah. out spanky local. What's popping? Amazing. Hey, what's what's up, man? What's up, criminal? We right here posted, homie. What's popping? Uh, what's up? Uh, it's Dorothy from from Seattle. Hell yeah! What's cracking? Yes, sir. Man, yeah, my boy. He opened up a show. It's like go. Oh, month ago for with you on, over like in eastern washington and then spanky local too i met him right there in inky tattoo yo shout he out to all inky. my wife arm hell yeah shout, shout out. out to inky's tattoo yo. good people over there that's the homie yeah but yeah no nah, man thank you for doing all the work you're doing over here over here that's so stay up much, much love, love gracias un abrazo Lexington, Kentucky, you're on live with Spanky Loco. What's cracking? Yo, Le Carla, how you doing? We blessed, homie. How you doing tonight? Cool, man. Shit, I'm just fucking you. Kentucky. I can't hear you, dog. Uncover your mic a little bit. Oh, shit. My God, I'm Way better. Nah, I just want to say what's up to you, man. Spanky Loco. Hey, much, much love, love homie. Pedro. We appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Un abrazo, homie. What time is it out there in Kentucky, homie? Shit. That fool's calling in. It solid. was late. He had to hang up. That's like 3 a.m. For sure. You know wow. what's crazy? Is that motherfucker called like 20 times right now. Come on. And that's all he said. That's it's it. crazy that, that sometimes that's all they want to do is just show a little love and they're out. You know what Come I'm saying? On. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he called a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just eight, two dozen eight, times. Nine times. Nine let's times. go. Hell yeah, we appreciate that too. Shout out to everybody calling in. We got Spanky Loco in the building. Much love and respect to everybody that's showing up and uh, coming in here. It's it's a lot of places uh, uh, around the country. It's way later than midnight, and we're still showing out. A lot of people still showing support. And, hey, it is what it is, man. We're going to shut the lines right now for a minute. And I want to talk back to you, homie. And I want to talk about the importance of being able to embrace the people. A lot of people in our positions don't. They, they, they act a little cocky. They act a little too good. I think that uh, it shows in your character that you appreciate them. It shows, mm. in, it shows in the way that you embrace your people, homie. How important is it to you to be stay connected to the hunter? Um, It's like, you don't go to a restaurant you're the chef and you start getting orders and you're like, nah, I ain't cooking today. Straight up. Great point. I ain't cooking. Not today. I cooked some good shit yesterday. And I think that's enough. So today I don't feel like cooking. It's like, that's your job, homie. That's the position you chose to, to entertain. You feel me? Entertainment is to entertain. So, because we have no set schedule, you run into someone. I feel like it's our responsibility to sh- 
show face, even if we're tired, hungry, upset, whatever the case might be. It's our responsibility because the impact you're going to have with that person is going to last a lifetime. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Many a times, how many times you met, you met a motherfucker and you're like, damn, I wish I never met this guy. I fucking wanted to meet him so bad. And honestly, I wish I never met this motherfucker. Shit. How many times you met artists, uh, 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 musicians, uh, comrades that you see them in one way, but when you meet them, it's not what you thought. Well, you feel me? And shit. Yeah, straight you up. You know? Absolutely. So I think being the best version of who you are and, you know, um, showing face a little bit and, you know, doing doing your job is important. Straight up. When you let that get to your head and now you're like, oh, well, I don't have to. Fuck them and fuck that. And maybe I'll do it today. Don't bother me or whatever. Now what you're doing is the blessings that you're given, really, you're shitting on the person that blessed you, the entity that blessed you, that put you in that position in the first place. So I think what's important is to say thank you. You know, every dollar we get, thank you. Every deposit that comes in, thank you. Every client that we, you know, bag, muchas gracias. And of course, when a, when a, someone stops us or, hey, what's up, Omir, whatever. Hey, what's good? Let's do this. You know what I mean? It's rare. I can't recall the times that I've been like, oh, no, sorry. Nah. I don't think it's... That's not part of the job. Straight up. You feel me? Hell yeah. Well, it shows in your character and it shows the way you carry yourself, homie. And I'm proud of you, G. And I mean it. And I'm glad that you pulled up on me last minute. Yeah. We made this shit happen. Like I said, I was 100 miles plus coming back from Vegas, wow. dog. And I'm glad, dog. I'm glad I cut the trip short because ain't no my gambling, dog. ain't no good dinners. Uh, more important wow. than having this good conversation with my, with my homie right here. Amazing. That the, the, the world's watching us, our culture's watching us. Mm. And maybe there's one person out there that could take a note and say, you know what, I could change my life. I could do it. I could Definitely I could get away can. from my, my comfort zone. I could move away from the hood. I could go tap. I could go rap. I could become a businessman. Oh, man. Break the cycle. Homie. Imagine that. Straight up. Imagine that. Imagine doing great things. Just imagine. Just imagine. Straight up, homie. God wants that for you. Absolutely. The devil don't want it, though. So why would you believe the devil? You feel me? Absolutely. Why would you fall for that? Never, you know already what the plan is. So who you gonna believe? You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And I've been tricked a gang of times. I've been tricked by the Chamuco a gang of times. I fell for it plenty of times. This time I refused to fall for it. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And sometimes you guys, you know, walk back, sit back a little bit and be like, hmm, let me decipher this. Let me pray on this. Let me sit down and pray. Pray about this. You feel me? Very important. Straight up. Come on. Words from the wise. Spanky Locals in the building, man. Hey. Make sure you guys give him a follow. Make sure you guys check him out 2024. Pull up on him at one of his conventions. Support his music. Come you on. know, it's all bulletproof love right here from our crime family entertainment team. Likewise, Anything homie. that you need, we we right here. We support you in full. And we proud of you, homie. God bless. Likewise, yeah. carnal. Hell Likewise. Yeah. I think um, the record, I'm excited about that one. Hell yeah. I think I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna knock a banger out. A little record and some little visuals, some nice, you know? Hell yeah. Pushing our people. Absolutely. Empowering us, making us look great. Brown yeah. excellence, homie. Absolutely. Maybe that should be the name of the record. <sighs> Let's kill him with that. Stop. <sighs> Done deal. Stop. <laughs> Y'all heard it. Hey. Y'all heard it, right? Hell yeah. Much love and respect to the homie Spanky Local. Come on, likewise. I appreciate you Suppressing. pulling up. And before we get up out of here, mm. I want to uh, respect everybody's beliefs, but I got to keep it real with myself, and I want to bow my head and give it up to our creator before we go. Hey, amazing. Father God, we come to you tonight to thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for another blessed night, another blessed testimony for my brother Spanky Local pulling up on me and being able to tell his life story from struggle to victory and being able to shed light on positivity in this world, Lord. Thank you for the words chosen. Thank you for every single person that tapped in tonight and supported. Thank you to everybody that continues to support our movement. Thank you for um, giving us all opportunity to be out here 
and set an example for your blessings and, and showing people that there's a way out of no way. And we thank you, and we want to ask everybody's blessings to, to continue to guide all of our paths, guide our brother Spanky Local's path and in, in, in to success as he uh, is destined for. I mean, we thank you for everybody that's going to continue to support. And uh, much love to everybody supporting, and God bless. Amen. Hell Amen, yeah. homie. Yeah. Wow. Hell yeah. Man. Don't it feel good? Homie, it was like um, stepping in a church real quick. Hell yeah. Real quick. Hell yeah. So, I know some people don't like it, but I'm going to always do hey, it. Homie. Man. It is what it is. You, you know, know, it's it's an uncomfortable thing, especially when you've been living that lifestyle. Yeah. It's like, this is the thing, homie. It's like you think, God don't love me. God don't want things for me. Why would I suffer? Why would he let me suffer? That's the mentality, right? But we got to stop punishing ourselves with that because God don't want you to suffer. This is just the way the world is, homies. So I think it's our responsibility to say, if we don't want to see suffering in the world, our duties will step up and be a better version of ourselves. How about that one? Absolutely. And then you don't feel like you're ashamed at looking up at the big homie and asking him for forgiveness and saying thank you and, and, and having him fill your cup with some positivity. You feel me? It's sometimes shame. It's like, man, how can God love me if he knows I'm, a, I'm an asshole? How can God love me if he knows how I grew up and he knows what I've done with these hands, the hands that he made for me to do great things? I'm using them to do terrible things. But that's not the case. You feel me? There's always redemption. You know what I'm saying? And if I live by that, if I was like, oh, no, nah, I can't. God don't love me because he's seen the way that I walked. Then, of course, we not, none of us stand a chance. But that's not true. We, know, we, know, we need to always think that the big homie got love and that there's always an opportunity to say, yes, we, um, we could turn the chapter and write a new one. It don't make you a punk. It don't make you less of a man. It don't make you none of that, homie. It don't make you fake. It don't make you none of that. What it makes you is more gangster. And I'll leave that there. Wow. Amen, homie. And I God appreciate bless. you pulling up, homie. God bless everybody tonight. We mm. wish everybody a good journey. Merry Christmas mm. and Happy New Year's because this is the last podcast until wow. next year. Much love and respect. We close it like that. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much Let's love. go. We're not with a bang. Hell yeah. Come on, man. Amazing. My brother Spanky, homie. Hey, my dog. dog. Hey, dog. I appreciate you. Hey, up, homie. Like, that's Jesus. That's Jesus.